All right, it is humid here in Georgia, um, and I'm out on my back patio, so I'm gonna be sweating a little bit, but hey, you know, like Daniel Cormier says, uh, you gotta embrace the grind, but anyways, uh, this is Trico. See how beautiful, mm, Trico, oh, I love you. So Trico is a beautiful old English Cocker Spaniel that I'm gonna be grooming today. And so um, what we're gonna be doing, oh, and a shout out to Bannix. Bannix sent me this awesome shirt here. And we actually have to buy some more Bannix. I'm running low, but Bannix is especially good if you're dealing with um, hot spots, ringworm, you know, anything, ear infections, anything that's bacterial or fungal related, which is pretty much everything <laughs> that, that's gonna bug the skin. Bannix is, uh, I love Bannix. And I, I don't get paid anything, you know, they just, I love them, they love me. What are you gonna do? Anyways, um, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is really, you have several options. You can start out with the Greyhound comb, you can start out with uh, the Coat King. This is really like, like an undercoat removal, rake, rake, undercoat rake. But anyways, um, also I have this for the ears because the ears look, very, see that? Very matted and tangled. It makes her feel uncomfortable, so she's gonna turn around, but that's good though, because it gives me this angle. You can also use a puma stone to, so you hold it tight. And you, so you hold the skin tight, and you go behind where you're holding it tight, and you pinch and pull, pinch and pull. And so this is what we're going after. See that? So this is um, her old last season's underwear, undercoat, you know, and that's what's coming out. So you can go through with this. You can even, hey Dexter, don't, that's Dexter. <laughs> hey, Dexter, it's not your turn. Dexter loves being groomed. He jumps on the table, so <laughs> anyways. Uh, he's probably like, that's my spot. So you can go through with the comb. I like to go through with the comb first just to kind of see what's going on, you know, just go, kind of go over everything. You'll, you'll see little bumps, little skin tags, and see, I'll try to bring this closer here. I don't know if you can see that, but like little uh, crusty stuff coming out of that skin. You see that? See that? This like crusty thing right there. I don't know if you can see that. But so what we're doing is we're clearing these pores. We're pulling these old dead hairs that are bundled up together because they grow in bundles. They literally grow in units. Like they, they grow, it's called complex hair, hair follicles because they don't just grow single hairs. They grow um, bundles of hair, like 12, you know, 14 hairs at a time. So the dead ones, you know, the dead bundles are the ones that are catching hair. There we go. So when you get down to the skin level, right here even, you can see this brown spot. And underneath the brown spot is, see that? A clogged pore. I don't know if you could see that. It was brown hair right there. But now that we combed it out, the brown hair, the brown hair is gone. See that? Not only is the brown hair gone, but the skin, the bump is not there anymore. It feels smoother. So um, as we're pulling, see that? I don't know, can, let me try flipping this. Get a better, see that? See that? All those little crusty bumps and stuff. So as we're pulling this dead hair out, oh, sorry, my hands are shaking because, oh man, it's the, uh, it's tiring, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's physically demanding. But anyways, as this comes out, right? As we get this out, along with all of that crusty stuff that's uh, inside the skin, so along with the dead hair, all that dead crusty skin dander comes out with it, clearing those pores out. So now the skin doesn't feel as bumpy. Oh, right there, there's another one. Let me see here. So there's another one right here. See that little patch of crust? Oh, okay. So let me see if I can get a, get a 
close up of this. Okay. So right here, you see that? So right at the skin level, there's like a bunch of crud and crust right there, right there, right? And so what you do is you comb that out, right, with the comb, and see how it catches? It catches because that bundle is fuzzy and dead and kind of tangled up against each other. So you're using that to your advantage and you're grabbing those bundles of dead hair and you're pulling it out of the skin, right? And as you pull it out, all that crusty stuff comes out, right? And you can go kind of this way. Oh, see that? See that? See all of that crusty stuff that just came out? That literally just came out of the skin, right? So as you pull that out, right? Now when you feel it, the skin, actually the bump is not there anymore. Oh, there's a little bump right here still, right there, but that's actually like a hard bump. And so that's more like a, like a you know, that, that's not gonna go away because that's actually hardened up. See that, almost like a little skin tag, they call it. <clears throat> so that's kind of hardened up. That's been there for a long time. Oh, you can even you know, feel that bump. So that's not, that's not really gonna comb out anymore. See, it's actually even clear. So the best we could do is just kind of clear it up like that. And so now these, these two bumps are now clear. All of that dead hair that was clogging that, this area up is gone. Along with it, all that crusty stuff is gone. Now you see smooth skin. So that's what we're doing in that one area through the whole dog, <laughs> multiply it by the whole dog. So, you know, it's because they have millions of pores and millions and trillions of follicles, you know, and hairs. And the way they stay fresh is by cycling it through each season. So that's why in the heart of the summertime, they say during the solstice, the winter solstice, you know, and then, but then in the fall and the spring as well, you'll notice your dogs start shedding. So every season, sorry, that's my cord because I'm running low on batteries. But anyways, you'll notice every season, your dogs will kind of go through a little time where their skin and their coat is kind of yucky, right? So let me put this down so I can use both hands so it doesn't, see that? So we're going through with the comb first, just to kind of get the bulk of it. And then we'll start using the finer tools. Alrighty. So, you know, so after we go through, oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, you saw like all that powder stuff come down. Look at that. See all of that crusty stuff? I don't know if you can really see it. Let me, let me see if I can change the camera. Oh, sorry, that's why, <laughs> this is my backyard is horrible. Okay, uh, that propane tank. Okay, there we go. See that? There we go. Oh, focus, focus. Anyways, uh, and not to, not to beat a dead horse, but anyways, all of this uh, cruddy stuff in there that came out of the skin, that's what we're doing. So it's, we're, we're, we're combing out the dead hair, but it's not really about the dead hair. It's more about the skin, right? Oh my goodness. Now that I'm using two hands, look at that. Oh my goodness, just popping out. So that's what I'm talking about when I say that it kind of explodes out of the skin. Look at this. All of this powdery stuff just started popping out as I was working that comb, right? Oh, Josh Aaron, <laughs> better luck today. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, <laughs> but hey, um, anybody who is uh, watching this, oh, Steel Test, Mike Boston has skin tags. So is that from dead stuff? Yeah, so the skin, it, this is just my theory, my opinion, right? But I think what happens is like the skin tags, um, and I actually wrote this in my book, In the Art of Grooming. I believe that these are skin eruptions, right? I think these are um, pores that, were, that just got so clogged over the years, right? And it happens so gradually because it's, it's, it's all happening on a cellular level. So what I, ha what I do to her today is going to the effects actually, we'll see it down the road sometime, you know, months from now, years from now. And then the accumulated effect of cellular, um, you know, the accumulated cellular effect over the years, I believe causes 
the pore to actually to erupt out, right? So I feel like this is a skin eruption and it, you know, hardens, you know, kind of hardens up, turns into dead skin, and then you get this skin tag. But it happens over time so slowly. And, you know, because we're not clearing, we're not brushing our, we're not taking the time, sorry. We're not taking the time to actually clear the coat, the skin, and we're just um, washing our dogs. And by scrubbing and washing our dogs, we're sending the signal down to the skin. Hey, we're being attacked. We're being attacked at the surface. So then, as a as a result of that, the skin starts to produce more skin cells and more oils at a at a accelerated rate, you know, faster. It speeds up the you know cellular the skin cell cycle, and so for about three weeks. And so then the pores that are already backed up because, you know, the owners probably didn't wash, I mean, brush the dog like this before washing them. Now that pore that was already full is now backing up from behind because it's producing more from underneath. And so over the years, you know, and the dog's skin is, is a living system. So it's always working to heal itself. So it will recover, especially when they're a young dog. But over the years, you know, the repeated cellular attack, I think results you know, so then you have like a four or five year old dog that starts to have, you know, skin tags and bad skin, but it happens over time, slowly. So nobody really notices, you know, nobody really um, traces it back to the grooming, to the, to the, because it, it, everybody thinks it's just, it's just a bath. You're just washing the dog, you know, like what's the big deal? You know, it couldn't possibly be the way we're washing our dogs, but I believe it is. I believe that it's because we're not taking this one crucial, critical step, you know, clean, clearing out these pores and look how much he's enjoying it, you know? As long as you don't do it hard. And every time it pulls too much, you kind of you kind of give, you know? And you just kind of do it gently, like that. And so all of this that we're pulling out, along with all that crud, you know, at the base that you see there is just lined with powder, you know, skin powder. <clears throat> but this is not going to get blasted off by the water in the, in the tub, you know, in the bat, when you give them the, the, the dog a bath. The water is not going to blast all this out. You know, I'm just, I, I just, I don't think that you can get a, you know, a pressure high enough. And if you did, I think it might actually hurt the dog. So rather than rely on the water jets to get all of this crud out for you, I think it's better to just roll up your sleeves and use some elbow grease and just get this out. And notice, notice the, the angles that I'm using. So here on the shoulders, I'm using this 45 degree angle so that the hair will lay nicely in this angle, right? You wanna pull the skin tight. And then, so then, from this point though, this point of the shoulder, I'm gonna go this angle now. So this angle, 45 degree, this angle, 45 degree. So that creates a 90 degree angle, right? So we're gonna go down 45 degrees, and then we're gonna go forward 45 degrees, right? And so if you, if you understand the natural anatomy of the dog, then even when you're brushing the dog, oh, that feels good, oh. Even when you're brushing the dog, you know, even if the dog is in, laying in a weird angle, <laughs> she loves us. So even if she's laying down and she's not really giving me good angles, I still know which way to brush her. So it doesn't really matter, you know? And I could still kind of work with how she's laying, especially since she's an older dog. You know, I don't want her to have to stand too much, you know, or do things that makes her feel too stressed out or uncomfortable. Oh, that's the spot. There you go. Good girl. See how it's all brown here too? So it's probably making her feel itchy. And as, I'm, see that? It's actually turning more black, this area. See how the color's coming back? The black, the, you know, the bolder. Black is looking blacker. The white is looking whiter, you know? So the colors actually start to come out. Actually. And the, the, the fuzziness goes away. They actually look silky and smooth and soft. They feel soft. So, you know, someone asked Michelangelo, you know, how he created the statue of King David. And Michelangelo said, I did not create King David. King David was already inside the marble. 
I just had to chisel away the excess. And I think that's how a true artist um, approaches everything. You know, I know that I am not creating this beautiful dog here. See how beautiful that hair looks now? How it lays? I did not create this. This was already here underneath all of this. I just had to chisel away the excess. And then you have this beautiful, comfortable dog. So as, a, as an artist, I believe that my job is not to focus so much on the haircut and to try to create a beautiful dog. The beautiful dog has already been created for us. We just have to chisel away the excess. So it makes the job of the artist very simple. Simple, not easy. And that's the difference, you know. This is very simple to understand. I'm not, I'm not explaining like, you know, astrophysics, you know, like, you know, hard to understand concepts or uh, theories. This is just very simple. The pores are clogged because it's summertime. The coat's going through a change and it's, uh, it needs room to grow its new clothes for the new season. And so before I wash, I'm gonna remove all this dead coat. It's very simple, but it's not easy. It requires your time, your energy, it requires sweat. So I'm holding this side tight like this from here and I'm pulling. There we go. Good girl. See that? And now here even, it's looking blacker. It's looking black and that's looking white, you know? And it's laying nicely. So here, 45 degree angle forward and then back to 45 degree this way, diagonally down the body, 45 degrees. Oh, please link the cone, oh, the steel Texas scale. Okay, what did she, what did she say? Man, uh, how do I see the chat much? Okay, uh, steel Texas out. That looks like a pimple, not like what my dog has. Just thought it was because he's 13 years old. He has chronic demodex. Uh, so quite possible not, quite possibly, root cause josh aaron drink some water oh thank you josh aaron josh aaron thank you so much man you got my back bro seriously gorgeous please uh link oh my goodness i'm not gonna report that why would i report that steel texas gal uh, gorgeous girl please link the comb you're using so um yeah i'll, I'll put in the links later right? um but it's uh paul brothers see paul brothers how many teeth is that one two two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen over 20, it's like 23 teeth. <laughs> okay, so, uh, what do you call that brush and where can I get one? It's called an undercoat rake. A lot of groomers refer, refer to it as a coat king, but it's called an undercoat rake and you can get it on Ryan's Pet Supplies and it's uh, made by Paul Brothers. Or you can order it off on Amazon as well. And I'll put the Amazon link on later. And um, if you click that link and you buy it off of Amazon, <laughs> I get a little bit of, no, I was kidding. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I, I was joking. People who don't know really know me. I was just joking. Man. My, my wife is constantly telling me, like, stop telling jokes to the customers, you know? You're not a comedian. I'm like, yeah, I know. I told this one guy one time, he was uh, coming to, sorry, I'm working here. This one guy came into our shop and he was like, oh, can I use your bathroom? And I was like, yeah, it's down the hall to, like, it's the last door to your right. And then as he was walking back there, hey, as he was walking back there, I say, hey, never mind the doggy porn in the bathroom. And I thought I would get a laugh or something. Nothing, silence, right? And then I hear the door close. I was like, oh no, oh no, you know? And um, then, <clears throat> Angel. So then I was like freaking out. And I was thinking, should I? Cause um, there's a lot of grooming, ma you know, grooming magazines in there and dogs were like painted up and, you know, there could have been a misunderstanding. So <laughs> I, uh, I told the guy, well, I was like thinking to myself, should I wait for him outside the bathroom? You know, put this dog down and explain that I was just joking. But then I was like, that would make it look really weird and suspicious. Like I really have something to hide, you know, like I really am into doggy porn. And I was like, oh my God, I shouldn't. But anyways, so lesson learned. Um, I just, you know, like he walked out, I didn't say anything. And then I just said like, have a good day. And he didn't even look at me and he just walked out. So there might be a guy here in Atlanta who thinks that I'm into, you know, doggy weird stuff, um, and I'm not, I so lesson learned, um, don't joke about things like that. Um, 
I'll, I'll make all the mistakes for you guys and then just share my experience. That way you understand how to avoid awkward situations. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, and we can't lie. We have to actually go through the code and do it, and it takes time. Alrighty. But I understand that she is older, and she's a pet dog, so with her, I don't do too much. You know, I try to limit the time that I spend doing this, even though I know it's best for her coat, for me to go through thoroughly and do everything, you know. Because of her age, I have to consider, you know, the time. And also, I have to consider that um, I am gonna see her again. Um, and, <laughs> you know, whatever I don't get today, I can always work out next time. Because again, you know, the hair I'm, I'm brushing out today, it takes a while for that to get replaced, to grow back and replace it. So in that meantime, the hairs that I didn't get, you know, they would have been um, pushed out a little further, you know, a little easier to brush out next time. And I can go ahead and get it next time. So, you know, we wanna go for excellence, not perfection. And perfection is not attainable anyways. So, you know, just rather than frustrate yourself, you just uh, try to do an excellent job. You know, a job that you're still proud of, even if it's not perfect. Alrighty, so just pulling one side tight. Oh, I gotta drink some water. Thank you, Josh Aaron. Oh man. And I haven't even got to the head yet. So once I start doing the head, that's when I'm gonna start busting out the pumice stone stripping knife and then um, when I get to the ears I'm gonna use some of this ear, healthy ear ear powder and um, you know pull out some of the dead hairs out of the ear canal uh, and I'll explain while I'm doing that you know so we still got a lot of work ahead of us um, if you want to go ahead and you know take off now <laughs> oh yeah Alrighty. Oh. Who put that vodka in there? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's no vodka in there, I promise. Oh. Alrighty. Alright. Oh, hold on. I did see some comments coming in. Let's see. Uh, well, nothing wrong with uh, good giving advice and getting a little something in return for your efforts. Yeah, I mean, Crystal LaCroix, exactly. I'm, you know... Uh, and I, I, I'm so grateful for it. I don't expect it, but I'm so grateful for it. Um, came into this hearing doggy porn. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> Brush is the coat king. You can get it on Amazon or elsewhere. Yes, exactly. On um, Tabitha, that was Garglio and Skyart says, you know, it came in here, doggy porn first. Tabitha Lancaster Mitchell, you crack yourself up. Yeah, exactly, I do. Um... <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I just think find things funny. Oh, speaking of which, okay, so one time I was at the post office, right? This is when I was young. I was like 19. I was at the post office standing in line. And there was this guy that had Tourette's syndrome. And, you know, I, I was, I understand, you know, it's Tourette's, right? And, but it was just so hilarious to me because the way he, he would do it, um, you know, it would just be silence. We're all waiting in line in the post office. And he goes, meh, right? So... And I was just like, okay, I was telling myself, don't laugh, don't laugh. Like, I was like telling myself, do not, do not laugh, you know, and everybody was not laughing. And so I'm holding it in, I'm holding it in. And then finally, he gets up to the counter, right? He gets up to the counter and the cash register and the cashier, she, you know, the, she's like, um, oh, what can I get for you today? How can I help you? And he goes, nah. <laughs> And I lost it. I lost it. I laughed. I started cracking up. And I was like so close to being helped. I was like, you know, I'm like second or third in line. And I left my spot in line. Even after I waited for like almost an hour, I left my spot in line, ran out to my car, and I just started cracking up in my car, laughing as loud as I can just to get it out, you know, because it was just building up inside. So I laugh at the wrong moments. Uh, you know, like that's just one example. So I laugh a lot and 
you know, I just, I don't know, I, I can't help it. I just, I find things funny, you know? Like, I, I, I know I shouldn't have. Whoever's listening, if I offended you, if you know someone with Therese, I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to offend anyone with that story. It's just, it's just what happened. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm, I, I shouldn't laugh. Okay, back to the, back to the grooming. See that though? Every time I go through, I'm getting like this big layer. But every time I get that layer, that same section is a lot easier to go through. See, there's not a lot of resistance. And um, it's looking a lot better too. Smoother, silkier, not as dull, brittle. The hair isn't rough, you know, all that rough hair has come out. So, so the reason why your dog looks rough is because there's too much of that dead hair in that coat. But once you brush all this dead hair out, see, she doesn't look so fuzzy and rough anymore. It starts to, her hair starts to look silkier and it starts to lay nicer. The color comes back. See that? So we don't have an old dog with dull coat. The dull coat is a result of the season, <laughs> the time of the year, and it's natural. So this dull coat just needs to be brushed out. And then you have a beautiful dog again. Good girl. She wants to scratch so bad right there. Oh, <laughs> good girl. So, I mean, see here how it's brown? The reason why it's brown is because that's dead hair collecting bacteria, right? And also the reason why she's itching is because it's making her skin feel tight and itchy when it gets full. So a lot of times when your dog's itching and scratching and chewing at themselves, like their legs here, they're trying to get that dead hair out. But see that? Oh my goodness. By helping, they're not helping. Because by introducing their saliva, now it's wet, their saliva has bacteria, and you know, the bacteria starts to grow, it starts to get brown. So by helping and chewing her legs like this, see how she's moving it away? So it's uncomfortable. I feel the bumps too. So by helping, they're not helping, you know? So we just have to take it into our own hands and just go ahead and get it out for them so that they don't have to mess with it. Alrighty. And I love to give my dogs an obvious way out. So when I hold her, I never want to hold her in a way where she feels trapped. We mean, I always want to hold her in a way where she feels like if she needs to, she can get out of this. See that? And that way, I can always ask for her trust again. There you go. Okay, we'll work on the legs a little later. So this takes time, you know? And I love doing it. I personally love this. I'm like, wow, I'm actually getting paid to do this? Like, what? You know, I get paid to work out. I get paid to spend time with dogs and feel that make, help them feel nice. Now, when I first groomed her, it was not like this. She was jumping all over the place. She was turning. She was making it very difficult for me. She didn't want me to groom her because she didn't know who I was, you know? And I, I tried to tell her, like, hey, I, I got subscribers on YouTube. I'm legit. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> so, I mean, but yeah, she had no idea who I was. She didn't care, you know, what my ego thought of me. And she just did not want me to groom her. But as she started to, you know, get to know me, and this was six years ago, you know, at our shop. And so we've known each other for six years. <laughs> oh my goodness, we go way back. So, you know, she, she trusts me, you know, now she loves for me to groom her because I'm, I'm, the, I'm that weird guy that shows up in her life every once in a while and comes and grooms her. You know, she's like, yeah, th that's that weird guy. You know, she knows me, so. go good girl and see how now she doesn't react so much even though I go to the same place we don't get the same reaction because that hair is gone that's why she's not itch that's not that's why this legs not going at that anymore even though I go through the same spot so that's how we know we're making progress okay so yeah you know, the thing is, I feel like um, Michelangelo, when he said, if people only knew 
how hard I worked at my mastery, it wouldn't seem so wonderful after all. <laughs> and I feel the same way, you know, but that's the thing. I'm willing to do it because I understand why it's important, you know, and how it's making them feel comfortable. And I see it. I actually see the results, you know. I go through here and she's not reacting the same way. She's more comfortable now, you know. It's not making her feel so itchy. See, even though I go through the same spot, she's not reacting anymore. And it's actually not catching so much hair anymore. So that's the thing. My clients pay me for results, not reasons. I, trust me, I try to explain what I do, try to educate, you know, all that stuff. They just, I feel like they are listening, but they can only retain so much, and so they forget. And it's just not on the top of their mind, and they're not going out and teaching anybody else what I just told them about their dog skin, and you know. So I don't really expect it from my clients anymore to understand what it is I do, you know. I just give them the results, and they pay me for it, you know. And uh, if I gave them a reason, you know, why their dog doesn't look the same as it usually does when I groom them and why it's different this time, uh, I don't think I would get paid anymore. You know, not the same anyways, you know. I get paid for results, not reasons. Okay, how do you know when to stop brushing? There are always hair coming out. No, 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 uh, the hair actually slows down, um, TG. Uh, it, it actually, like I said, um, once you brush all this out, uh, it takes it takes a while for the hair to actually grow this back. See how long it is. So it, the, it, it does finally slow down. It just it just feels like forever. <laughs> but it's actually only about an hour and a half, two hours, maybe three, sometimes three, because it's during the summertime and we're going through a coat change. But and, and so that that's the thing. I know when to stop when I'm seeing results. See, she's feeling more comfortable. The, the hair feels softer and silkier. So when I see results, that's when I know when to stop. And I just go, so I, I, I brush until, you know? I just brush until. Okay. And I keep moving, you know? Because you can always come back to an area. But you don't want to overwork an area, you know? And overstimulate it. Oh, thank you, Trip. Thank you. So, uh, you can always come back to an area. Um, you don't have to, you know, uh, keep going at the same area until it's finally done. Just, you know, move on, and then you can go back to it. Okay. Banix, thank you so much for the shirt, by the way. This is a quick dry shirt. Oh my goodness, the material. I can't say enough good things about Banix. <laughs> I spray it on my feet when my feet gets fun. Anyways. <laughs> uh, one person told me, I can't believe you have any subscribers at all. And I told them, I can't either. <laughs> you expect me to disagree? Like, oh man. Oh, did I miss any comments? Let me see. Uh... Let's see, oh, I do too. Steel Chris, uh, agree with the prior comment from Crystal. Please link all comments, okay? Sky Art, but why did that guy say ma? But why did that guy say ma? I don't know. I don't know. Sky Art says, but why did that guy say capital M A A A, all caps, ma? What, but why did that guy say ma? That's gonna keep me up all night. I don't know. I don't. I need. I need more backstory. Uh, who's the guy? And what? <laughs> okay. TGT. Love your vid. Oh, thank you. How do you know? And just okay. Crystal Lacroix. Is there something better to use on their face? Get around their curves and tight spots. Yes, there is. Oh, Sky Art. The post office. Oh, my. Oh, because he had Tourette's. He had a disease. He couldn't control it. So every once in a while. He would even look around, he, and that's what made it more funny. Oh, man, that's what made it more funny was because he was aware of it. And he would he would go he would go like ma right, and then he would look around. And I, and I try not to make eye contact. I would just just breathe, you know. I was like, just breathe, just breathe, and don't laugh. Just breathe, you know. And then he would do it again, ma, and then he would look around. And I was like, do not laugh, you know. I was like, do not laugh. And then he went to the counter, and the lady asked how she could help him. 
and he and she it startled her and I, and I lost it I mean I just oh, man uh Tabitha Ella um Sky Art I think I would just pinch myself oh that's a good idea that's a good idea Tabitha uh, Sky Art thank you so much next time I'm in a situation where I know it's inappropriate to laugh I'm gonna pinch myself and then what if I wake up? What if it was like a dream? That'd be all we anyways. Alrighty. So we're almost done with her body. You know, I've gotten her chest, I've gotten her shoulders, I got her back area, her you know, I'm working on her mid back here on this side. And then we'll work towards the, the back haunches, you know. Sky art, can I pinch you? <laughs> I gotta charge extra for that. No, it's good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh man. All right. Oh, she see she's going with the leg right there. Oh, if that's a feel good spot. Because it's catching right here. This is where it's like really piled in thick in those pores. Oh yeah. She's helping me. We're grooming together, baby. Teamwork. What's gonna work? Teamwork. What's gonna work? Teamwork. Anyways, uh, you know, I have, I have young daughters. This is a show. Anyways. Uh. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. My belly. Uh, okay. Do you do the nails before brush? No. I, I, I should. I probably could. But I didn't. You know, sometimes I do. You know. <laughs> uh... Tabitha, oh God, I take that back. Oh, Skyar, oh God, I take that back. <laughs> exactly, baby, I charge. Charge for that kind of stuff. Anyway, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I heard that in a movie somewhere. I, so, anyways, Tabitha Lancaster, she's talking about your post office story. Yes, yes, I got it. So now I don't have to stay up all night thinking, you know, why did the guy say ma? What? Anyways, uh, TJ, did you, do you do the nose before? Okay, perfect. Oh my, and look at that. See that? Another little big... And that's when she was going all crazy with the back leg. So now, let me go through the same spot. See, I'm going through the same spot. Okay, a little bit, a little bit, but not so much. And the brush is not catching so much. Good girl, treacle. So that's the thing. That's when you know when to stop, is when the brush let the brush tell you when to stop, you know? And let the dog let you know when to stop. Because again, that, and that's more true than anything else. Let the dog let you know when to stop. When the dog is obviously fussy, right? And just had enough, you know, respect that, you know? Let the dog down, give her a break. So, alrighty. Good, oh my goodness. I wish I would've caught that. When she shook, Oof, a cloud of dust just all around her. Oh my goodness, but yeah, she shook all that dust off of her. How do you avoid slicker burns when I brush on Yes, exactly. Um, you wanna be very careful because when you brush, you can overbrush and it can, oh, you know what? Let me do it this way. So what I like to do is Rather than push down, rather than push down into their skin, I like to brush away, you know? So pull in and out. So I like to brush away from their skin, right? And now it's not even catching here anymore. Look at that. It's going through smooth because all of that's gone now. See, so I know a lot of, one time I was teaching this to a, a groomer that I hired and he put the tool down. He goes, you have to pay me, you have to pay me $500 to do this, right? And I was like, $500? I was like, why don't you just be honest and say you don't want to do it, you know? I, would, I could respect that. Because honestly, sometimes I don't want to do it either. And I understand. So I was like, if you just be honest and say you don't want to do it. You know, don't say some ridiculous number like $500. The market doesn't support that. You know, the market doesn't value a dog groom at $500, you know? So <laughs> either say you don't want to do it and charge appropriately or say, yeah, I'm willing to do it. I actually like doing it and charge appropriately. So anyways. Um, but yeah, that kind of frustrated me when he was like, he just put the tools down. He was like, I'm done. You got to pay me $500 to do this. I was like, I'm not paying you $500. <laughs> Nobody's going to pay you $500 to do this. I mean, oh my goodness. Speaking of $500. Okay. So, uh, 
I don't know who this lady was, but her email address said supermodel one, you know? So anyways, so we, I just thought, oh my gosh, she's a supermodel. But she contacted me asking me to fly out and groom her dog for her, right? And I did. I was like, I never done this before. I don't even know how to charge for this. And so she was like, um, just, you know, let me know how much you, you want. And I was like, okay. Uh, and then I had a number in my head. I was gonna ask for 300, right? But then I, was, I didn't want to. I didn't want to offend her if I was too high. So I was like, I have a number in my head, but if I say it, I don't want you to feel like you know offended or anything, or you know. I was like, so or get the wrong idea. So I don't want to say the number. I was like, you know, do you have a number in mind? Maybe if you tell me yours, I can see if I'm in the ballpark or not, right? And she goes, I don't know, a thousand. <laughs> I was like, a, th a thousand. I was like, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> no, I was kidding. It didn't work out. My wife, you know, and I, my wife didn't want me to go. So anyways, um, I didn't go. I didn't do it. But I just, it was an eye opener. I was like, what? I was scared to tell her 300. And she says, I don't know, a thousand? Like, it's no big deal. I was like, oh my God, a thousand for a dog groom? I guess. But I mean, honestly, I would do it for free. This is fun to me. Oh my goodness. And the fact that I'm the one that gets to do this for Treacle and help her feel better, you know, spend time with her, quality time. Who gets to spend this kind of time with the dog? This is so intimate and, and, and interactive, you know? Like nobody spends this kind of time where you're all up in there, you know, this kind of intimate, close time with the dog for hours. A lot of people don't get to do that. I do, you know? Okay. <sighs> Skyheart, try try using a gentle pat and a pull method. Yes, exactly. Pat and pull method instead of long. Exactly, instead of longer strokes and pulling. It's Crystal Lacroix, perfect. Um, Nikki Hammond, I have a rat terrier that's shedding like crazy. What's going to be the best tool? As odd as odd it is, I find it harder to work on on her than my. Yeah, exactly on your shit. So on a rat terrier, you could use like a rubber curry brush. Um, you can use uh, uh, one of these undercoat um, rakes. Uh, you can use a slicker. Oh, where did I put it? I think she's sitting on it. You could use a pumice stone. Uh, oh, there it is. Oh, sorry about that. You can use a stripping knife. So those are all good tools for the rat terrier. Uh, people, Skyer says, people there can choose what they want to do as a groom. What they want to do as a groomer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, one to do as a groomer? Yes, uh, everybody has a choice, I think. <laughs> uh, Skyer says, thanks, Crystal. Uh, Nikki Hammond says, okay, great, thanks. Perfect. So let's get the chest a little bit more. And see, it's like, especially around the throat, you don't want to go in. It's more a pat and pull method, like, like Crystal LaCroix says. I like that, pat and pull. I'm going to use that as the, the way to describe things from now on, the pat and pull. I was like, you know, you want to do this, you want to do this, you know, I'm trying to like show you sign language or something. Pat and pull. That's perfect. See, pat and pull. And you want to pull the other side of the skin tight. So by doing this, even if I didn't wash her and I just returned her back to her owner, she would smell a lot less because I got all of this hair that's holding on to the smell, I'm pulling the smelly hair out. So the hair that's left isn't gonna smell so much. And then after I wash her, she's really not gonna smell. And that nice fresh dog, you know, um, non-funky smell will last for weeks. Some of, my, some of my clients tell me it lasts all six to eight weeks, you know, in between grooms. Um, a lot of them forget that I'm even coming because they say that, their dogs just look so, still look so good even after eight weeks, they forgot that it was time for a groom. So, you know, the proof is in the pudding, again. You know, the market, the marketplace, which is also called reality, which is also called real life, the marketplace pays you for results. They don't pay you for reasons. Oh, and here's how the way Jim Rohn puts it. The way Jim Rohn puts it, you get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. And he says, it takes time to bring value to the marketplace. Like right now, it takes time. But you don't get paid for the time. You get paid for the value. So 
you have to understand what is the market value for my service? And then you could even look at the high end and you can say, okay, so if I wanted to provide a service that is hard to replace, that it's gonna be difficult to find somebody else to replace me because they're gonna to have to be willing to do what I do and they're gonna to have to be willing to match my price. So if somebody wants to take my client from me, they're gonna to have to be willing to sweat the way I sweat and match my price. And if they're willing to do that, then hey, mad respect, bro, come at me, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's, yeah, you just, you have to respect the, the marketplace and how they value your service. You can't charge $500 unless the market values it at that, you know? And, and you know, like, like I just gave you the story, my story, the example, obviously there is a market for that. People are willing to pay $1,000 for one groom, you know? Nice. My wife just came out and set up a fan for me. All right, so most of her body now is done. Her midsection here too, and on this side, uh, still catches a little bit, but there's not that reaction anymore. And see that? When I felt that it caught too much, I just backed off, you know, rather than yanking too much. And when you back off and just kind of tap at it like that, just tap it, it actually comes out a lot easier. It's really not about force. It's just about, you know, persistence, not about force. Oh my goodness, wow. A bunch of powder just popped out right there <laughs> out of her skin. Oh my goodness, that's awesome. Okay, so now let's work on her backside. Oh, hey, Annabelle. Hey. Oh my goodness, look at that. And that is compact, that's like compacted in, look at that. Isn't that crazy? The amount of dead hair that comes out. Okay. Oh. All right, let me get some water. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Let me show my daughter, Annabelle. Hey, Annabelle, what, what are you supposed to be studying right now? Aren't you homeschooling? What's your, what's your uh, study right now? Huh? You're in first, no, I know if you're in first grade, but what are you studying right now? Spelling, math, history? Spelling right now? Okay. Anyway, she, oh my goodness, she, she reads books like it's nothing now. She read me a book about the, what is it about? Um, the Komodo dragon. They lay eggs. Anyways, so, okay. So that's all good. It's all good. Oh man, and you don't want to forget the tail. Oh, sorry. You don't want to forget the tail. The tail is easy to forget and overlook, but... The tail is also the area where I see the most like cruddy spots, you know, like cruddy areas of the skin where it's all scabbed over because um, there's not a lot of skin there, I guess, you know, not a lot of space um, in that skin. So it just gets crusty easier. And see that? Well, that's coming out of her tail right there. So. Alrighty. Nice. And now this fuzzy tail is actually looking smoother, silkier. Oh, hold on. There we go. S smoother and silkier. Right there. See that? And you can also even use a hand stripping knife. Oh, somebody was asking me how to use this. Okay, so a stripping knife, you want to use it as like a way to help 
instead of using your fingers like that, where it's gonna be hard to grip, um, you're using this to help grip. So you're just using it to pinch and pull. Pinch and pull, see that? Pinch and pull. And you wanna lay it flat against the skin, like that. Pinch and pull. And also, it's good to work from the bottom up. So from the tip of the tail, you just kinda go through, pinch and pull, pinch and pull. And I'm holding the skin tight with my thumb right above it. So you just kind of pinch it. Oh, you just ruin the camera angle. Okay. So right here, on this side, we're just gonna pinch and pull, pinch and pull. See that? Oh my goodness, did you see that? That little white powdery thing just fly out of there? It's literally like locked in there because it's all crammed up and jammed in there. So when you pull these uh, old hairs out like this, Sometimes it comes out and just hits me right in my face. Like I feel it, I feel like a little speck fly out, just explode out of the skin and just hit me right in my mouth. And then I eat it, no, I'm just kidding. Oh my, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I said that. Oh man, look at that. So, oh man. Good girl, look at that. And now it's looking blacker, right? This fuzzy stuff is out now. So it's looking darker, it's silkier, it's not fuzzy and rough anymore. Smooth hair, rather than this fuzzy hair that I'm pulling out. Look at that, look at that. Chiseling away the excess. We're artists. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at the wreck back there. <sighs> but anyways, okay. So, let's work on the face. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, sorry about that, Dexter. Uh, let me turn the screen. Okay. Are there any comments that I missed? Let me see. Okay, no comments. Perfect. Alrighty. So, we can use the pumice stone here to start getting most of this stuff out. And you're using it the same way as a stripping knife. Pinch and pull, pinch and pull. Good girl. See that? And now the head even is not looking as bumpy. You know, we're not getting much out, but still it's making a big difference already. Just by getting that out. There we go. See that? Okay. Good girl. There we go. Look at that. Oh, you could feel it even. Oh man, those bundles of just rough dead hair. Fuzzy. They just pull right out. You could feel it coming out of the skin. Okay. Oh, it feels, it feels silkier too, where I just did. Compared to this side, it feels rougher here than here, you know? So that's the thing, it's like, and I'm looking for results, you know? I'm not looking for reasons and the science. This one doctor, this one vet, was telling me that um, brushing the dog, you know, is damaging their skin and it's, uh, you know, tearing the, the um, oils, you know, he's like, Think of it like Jello. The the analogy he gave me, he was like, think of it like Jello. He was like, when you scrape the surface of Jello with the fork, what happens? And I was like, it rips. You know? He was like, exactly. That Jello is like the oil that's on the dog's skin. So when you go through with the brush, the teeth, it's like the fork, and you're tearing open that protective layer of oil, and that now the dog is exposed to all the bacteria and everything. And I was like, okay, I'm trying to follow this. But then I really thought, and I actually really rethought this. I was like, maybe he's right. I mean, he is a vet. And you know, he, he sold me this shampoo that he was saying that I don't have to brush before I wash and it's gonna help with the skin problems. It didn't, it made the skin problems worse. And now the dog's fine because I'm brushing regularly. But anyways, it kind of made me feel like maybe he's selling like a traveling snake potion seller or something. But he's, and he's well known, so I'm not gonna say his name. 
But um, yeah, it just I, I really started to reconsider my whole process because I'm willing to. I'm not married to my process, you know? I, I can change my process anytime. You know, if new information comes to me, then I will reconsider always. But, and so I was reconsidering it, but then I thought about it, I was like, wait a minute. When you introduce water to that analogy, the analogy literally falls apart, you know? Because when you add water to jello, once it's raked open like that with the fork, it literally disintegrates, it dissolves, right, in the water. Oil doesn't act that way. So that analogy doesn't work, you know? The analogy literally falls apart when you introduce water to that analogy. So, yeah, and you're telling me for all these centuries, all these people that have had dogs and that have shown them even, you know, in, in these championship shows, and when you watch them at the side of the, side of the ring before they show their dog, they're combing them obsessively, you know? You're telling me they're all doing damage to their dog's skin, you know? You know, equestrians, people who ride horses, every time they brush their horse, they're literally exposing their horse to all this bacteria. You know, they're, they're damaging their horse's skin by brushing their horse. Come on, you know? Like, I really lost respect for that doctor. And because he's representing that company, I lost respect for the company. I'm not gonna buy their products anymore, their shampoos. It's like snake potion, you know? So anyways, I'm just, I'm just giving my honest feelings, you know, but anyways, yeah, vets who think that you're not supposed to brush your dogs, I mean, maybe really reconsider why you're a vet, you know? Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I went too far. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said that. Did anybody comment? Like, oh, okay, good. I'm not trying to come off as like a holier than thou. It's just when it doesn't make sense to me, you know, I'm not willing to just do what someone tells me to do if it doesn't make sense for me. You know, maybe that's why I can't hold a job. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. If it doesn't make sense for me to do, I'm just not going to do it. But if it makes sense, I'm gonna do it no matter what. <laughs> Ooh, burn bed guy. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not trying to make st start trouble. So I'm not even gonna say the name of the company. I'm not gonna say the name of the vet. You know, I'm not trying to start trouble. I'm just saying, just think about it. If you have met, if you ran into that same vet at the trade shows and he tried to sell you on the same uh, shampoos that he, he sold me, that literally made no difference on the dog skin. Um, actually made it worse and I think it's because I didn't do the brushing before the bath um, yeah if he has given you the same analogy the jello um, if you put rake a fork on top of the jello then li literally just think about it because if you put if you pour water on top of that jello it's gonna disintegrate and that's not how oil acts you know so um, can you show your hands please yeah well <laughs> oh, what was it? Hand check? Oh, maybe like uh, riding in the back of the bus. Hand check, hand check, everybody. Anyways, yeah. I didn't have my hands in, in inappropriate places, if that's it. Oh, yeah, oh you're probably sh asking to show your hands for the hand stripping. Sorry about that. Shoot. When you work, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I took it to another, a different place. Alrighty. See? You just pinch and pull, pinch and pull. And I'm going to do her head, you know, a little bit more like hand, I'm getting detailed with the hand stripping because I'm about to shave her head. So anytime I'm about to do any close shaving, I really want to make sure those pores underneath are clean. Because if I if I just shave without clearing this stuff out there, I'm literally trapping the stubble inside the skin if I shave close. So I want to do this before I shave too close because I, you know, all of this stuff inside there, I don't want that to be stuck inside the skin to, you know, fester and make her feel uncomfortable, cause bumps, you know? Okay. Oh, let me do like this. Okay. Maybe that'll be good. Tell me if you guys can see that. I just turned the camera so I can't see the screen. Well, actually, if I can't see the screen, I can't see your comments either. 
So it wouldn't matter if he told me. Oh my goodness, little brown speck just, oh there it is. Just came out, I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, actually let me turn this around so I can see what's going on here on the screen. There we go. See, and now it's looking much smoother. The color's there, silky. And so when I when I use it without pinching and pulling, I'm, I'm laying it flat against the skin so it doesn't really scrape. And so you see, it just kind of goes through smoothly. And then for the face here, you can use another stripping knife called the face, um, for the face, face stripping knife, right? And it's like a little triangular shape. So this you can use here. Let me show them the treacle. There you go. Uh, she's like, no. Okay. Let me get a better angle here. There we go. So for the face here, you can use this to go through. See that? How it just kind of fits nicely for in between the eyes there. And you just pull that out. See all that coming out? Good girl. Oh, I'm sorry. It's making you feel uncomfortable. There we go. There we go. So she has the obvious way out. But she's also learned over the years that if she keeps taking the obvious way out, then we're going to be here for a long time. <laughs> so she's learned, like, uh, even though it's uncomfortable, I'll just kind of deal with it. Here we go. See? So that's why when people say like, hey June, can you do this faster? Can you do the groom faster or faster? I'm just like, how much faster do you want me to do this? You know, like, I mean, I, I, I always tell them like, I'll try, you know, I'll do my best to try to keep the time down. But I mean, how much faster? Do you want me to do this? You know, oh, right there. See this brown spot right there? That brown, dull patch of hair? Oh, sorry about that. There we go. Look at that. And now it's gone. That brown, dull patch of hair, literally gone. Nice. There we go. Just to, oh, there we go. See that? There we go. Oh, man. Okay, there we go. <coughs> so, this is why I don't really stream uh, my grooms live because I just feel like, wow, this is, uh, you know, kind of unfair sometimes to the people watching it. I feel like this is very boring and not really a good exchange a value for your time you know i feel like you're just watching me do this repetitive o over and over you know like i don't know i just feel like I, that so if any of you are wondering why i don't stream grooms live well first of all a lot of my clients live in these kind of exclusive uh neighborhoods and you know it's just i respect their privacy and i don't want to put their house and their business out there so you know I, I just don't and also another reason is because yeah i just feel like it's going to be so boring you know, you're just, you're just watching me remove dead hair. And that just take, it takes a while. See this patch of brown hair right here on, on the... All right, there we go. Oh, I got it. Where did it go? Oh. Obviously, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, you're okay. I'll use the face knife. You're okay, girl. There we go. Got it. See that? Right there that brown patch of hair that was right there on her lip so it's still brown right there but at least that long piece is gone and she doesn't like it obviously oh I'm sorry girl because it's already feeling making her feel itchy and uncomfortable okay I like to see the vet who watches when they're grooming if they're ripping their skin open like that um sky my boss asked me not to untangle oh yeah. Okay, my boss, Skyheart says, my boss asked me not to untangle and brush out the dog before, before the bath. 
uh, she just asked me to put a lot of conditioner and tangle her after the bath. Is that method right? See, I, I'm really kind of um, trying to get away from right and wrong these days. Um, try not to think of it as right or wrong. Try to think of it more as, is this best for this dog? Because if it's for certain cases, that's, that is right, you know? Um, one time when Treacle here wasn't doing that well, I really didn't do a lot of prep. I just kind of combed her and washed her anyways. You know, and I tried to get most of it out after the bath, like you, your, your boss said. Just every situation is different. So try not to think of things as right or wrong, you know? Just think of it as, is this right for this situation for this dog? Um, Skyart, I disagree. This is very entertaining and educational. <laughs> Thank you, Skyart. All right. Alan Palace is not boring. Jerky cooking, dog not here for an hour, okay. Uh, Crystal LaCroix says, Sky Air Conditioner helps for the mats but doesn't do much for the pores, exactly. And that's where a lot of the skin exactly is coming from. Breaking up the mats before the bath does help get the water into the skin because as you're breaking up the mats and as those dead hairs are coming out of the skin, that crud and all that cellular debris, all that skin dander is coming out of those pores as well, like you saw here. Uh, she does that for all dogs. Um, you know, again, I don't want to say she's right or wrong or I'm right. I may be wrong and I'm open to that. That's the thing. When the vet told me I was wrong, I was completely open to it. And I didn't argue with him. I listened to everything he said and I went home and I really considered it. And I even talked about it with some other friends. I even talked about it with my wife. I was like, maybe I should just redo my whole process and not brush before the bath. But then I really thought about it and I was like, wait a minute. And he's selling this product hardcore. You know, he's really pushing this product. It makes me feel like maybe he's not so genuine. Uh, oh, why did I do that? Okay, so that's, uh, that's that. Now let's do the ears. Uh, and we can go through again a little bit with the pumice stone just to make sure we got those pores clear. See that with the pumice stone? You can kind of use it like a brush. There we go. Because the more we get out now, the easier the bath's gonna be, the cleaner she'll be, and the faster she's gonna dry. Because this dead hair that I'm pulling out, it's, it absorbs the hair and it holds on to it. I mean, the, the water, it absorbs the water and holds on to it. And so it actually takes a lot longer to dry. And even though they seem dry, when you start to dry another area and you look back, like at this foot, you move on, you look back at it, and it's, uh, it looks wet again. You know, it just feels like it takes forever to dry because all of this um, dead hair is still in there. But when you brush it all out, or not all of it, but when you brush a lot of it out, it just really cuts down on that drying time as well. All right, speaking of drying, my little force dryer um, gave out, well, the high, the high switch gave out, so now I'm working with just the low power. <laughs> but I've noticed that even with the low power, it's not taking me that much longer to dry the dogs because I'm spending this time getting all of this dead hair out. Look at this, it's just falling to the floor. I'm getting this out, you know? And so it's not taking as long to dry her after the bath. Oh, what a lovely doggy. I adore Spaniels at home. I love Spaniels, oh my goodness. Isn't she so beautiful? She's like, oh, stop talking about me. Don't be modest, don't be modest. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so. We went through with the pumice stone, got a lot of this out. Went through with the stripping knife. Oh, that's the spot right there. Okay, gotcha. Alrighty. So yeah, I, I really am a fan of just letting the dog um, get comfortable, you know, not tying them up, straining them, you know, like, you know, stressing them out too much. Especially as they're older, I don't really ask her to stand too much. So, there we go. Okay. okay, good girl, right there. All right, I see that brown spot. Okay. Oh man, her breath. So here's an interesting little thing going on. Oh, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> That's like a, you just, are you going to shave the back of the dog? Yes, I am. Um, so yeah, because uh, with, with Treacle here, which they want low maintenance, we shave the head, we shave the top of the ears, you know, keep the bottom of the ears long, like, you know, spaniel ears. And then we do the back, the spaniel pattern on the back. And I also kind of do, you know, do a little bit of a trim on the body and the, and the legs. The, you know, so we trim the legs as well. 
So we just give her like a kind of a modified breed cut. Um, so it's a little bit easier to maintain as a pet. So the ears. Oh. <clears throat> Alrighty. Excuse me while I wipe some sweat. Okay. <clears throat> so the ears. What I'm going to do is because, I don't know if you can see, there's like a lot of matting here. Like, let's see that. Look at that gnarly mat, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this mat, mat splitter. And I'm going to go and rather than yank it out, I'm just going to work it like this, like a saw a little bit. You know, and kind of pull out. You know, kind of work the mat away from the skin. See how I'm doing that? I don't know if you can see. There we go. That's a better angle. So I'm just gonna kind of stick it in, stick it in and pull it out. Stick it in and pull, pull it out. Oh, <laughs> I gotta come up with better words. Um, so I'm gonna get it under the mat here. See that? At the base of the mat, I'm gonna stick it under the mat, right? Stick it under the mat. So I got it under the mat, and then I'm just gonna kind of work it. See that? Just work it. Okay, there you go. You just work it like that. So now, see that, how that mat is all broken up now, right? Now you can go through, where's my comb? Now you can go through with this comb and kind of work that out with the comb. Oh, I'm sorry, girl. You don't wanna pull too hard. So that's why I'm holding here at the base of it so I don't pull too hard and just kind of work it, just tap it, you know, not hard. There you go, just tap it. There you go, see that, bam. You know, so you're not trying to get it out in one fell swoop, you know, you just kind of work it, work it gently, tap it. And it also helps if you break it up a little more first, you know, so you, I like to go through with this and just kind of break it up, break everything up. Now, Let's say that you don't have mat splitter, right? Let's say you don't have this tool, this nifty little tool here that I really love because if you notice the blades right here on the inside, so here it doesn't, it doesn't hurt the dog at all. See that? So you get under the mat and it just helps you break it up as you pull out, right? So let's say you don't have this nifty little tool here. Okay, what you can do is get your scissors right and here's my red robin shears oh my goodness robin robin stolen sent me these shears of hers her personal shears when my tools got stolen out of my car she overnighted it to me in a, in a snowstorm well, she drove out in a snowstorm to send this to me so anyways you can get your um shears they might not be as special as my red robin shears here priceless but you know not everybody can have luxury uh, equipment like I do, you know, because I'm Jim the Groomer, so. <laughs> so anyways, let me move you a little bit here. What you can do is get your scissors, right? Open them up, right? Lay the blade, you know, lay, lay it flat like this so the blade is away from them. Get under the mat, just like the mat splitter, right? And then you can just kind of work it the way you would work a mat splitter, in and out. You know, and you can even pull it out. If she moves, if she moves or do, does anything, I'm gonna pull it out because, you know, I don't want, I'm gonna pull it out in a way so that she, if she moves or shakes or anything, there's no chance of injury. So see how she moves, I pull it out and pull it away. So, and then you go back under the mat there. And the cool thing about scissors is sometimes if you see the mat right there and you have the, you have the scissors through, you have one, the bottom blade through the mat, see that? You could just cut it. <laughs> So the cool thing about scissors, it saves you a little time, but also you're gonna see little sharper lines in the coat at when, you know, when you finish. So it is better just to kind of work it like this, you know, because when you just cut it, you're gonna get those cut lines and it's gonna show. So that's just a shortcut, but just know that when you take shortcuts, you know, you don't get exactly the same finish. And if you do, you have to work a little bit harder towards the end to get the same finish if you take shortcuts. So, but I'm not saying don't take shortcuts, you know, especially if you're running out of time or anything, you know. But today, um, I knew that there was going to be a lot of hand stripping and a lot of work to do with Treacle. And I know she's old and she, you know, I want to go a little slower with her and take my time and not feel rushed. So we purposely scheduled just Treacle today. 
But that's also why I've been kind of pushing, um, not pushing, but encouraging other groomers to start their own YouTube channel and start their own, you know, blog, maybe write a book of your own, you know, because all of these are ways to not only show people who you are, so people who not only like who you are, but they believe what you believe in, you know, they get to find you and do business with you easier, but also it, it gives you all these other um, channels, these streams of passive income, money that comes in through your sleep, and that way you can rest easy on days where you only have one dog scheduled, and also you price accordingly so that you're okay with this one dog, you know, and spending this day with this one dog and not worrying about the time because I don't, I don't charge for my time. <laughs> I don't have an hourly rate because I believe time, time is precious, not just my time. I believe time is precious and that we only have so much of it, all of us. So I don't charge for my time. I can't, I, I can't, I don't see a way to put a value on it. So I charge for the service. And the way you charge for your service is you see how the marketplace values it and then you charge accordingly. Okay, so, and the thing is, if you're not happy with how much you're getting paid right now at the moment, then all you have to do is just work on your own skills. You know, work on becoming more skillful, better, right? Providing a better result, better finish than other groomers can provide. Um, then when you start to give your clients something to be loyal to, right? You give them something that is very difficult to replace. Then you get to charge more as you become less available, right? As you become more in demand, it's the, it's the law of supply and demand. So let's say you're only making an average of $12 an hour right now and you wanna make more. Well, the way to make more is to do more, right? And a lot of people say, well, I'm not gonna do more if I don't get paid more. That's ridiculous. Pay me first and then I'll do it. But that's just not how it works, you know? Most businesses, the marketplace says, no, do the work first and then if you do it well, we'll pay you, right? <laughs> so you have to work, first do it, and at first it's not, you're not gonna be able to do it well because you're learning, and so you can't charge a lot for the service, right? But then as you get better and better, and then demand for you, your, your demand starts to rise, and then your availability starts to shrink, now you have to charge more, you know? And now you're not making just $12 an hour, you're making $25 an hour, you know? Um, by becoming more skillful, by becoming better, you know? So, here we go. And so now, the outside of the ear, see how, see how nice and smooth that looks now? All those mats are gone, look at that. Look at that. Look how beautiful her ears are. Beautiful cocker ears, right? Oh, there's some more mats right there. But, so I haven't done the inside yet. So the outside now is combed out, right? The mats are gone. Now we have the inside to do <laughs> all those mats. <clears throat> so the inside, same concept. I'm going to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm, gonna, I'm fixing a. I'm fixing a. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like what's wrong with this guy? So I'm gonna go through with my scissors here like this, just to kind of make sure there's no, oh, see right there, boom. So to the naked eye, I didn't even see that mat there, you know? So I say, I always say, uh, let your tools show you how much work needs to be done, you know? So a lot of, a lot of uh, my clients at first, when they first started, you know, as my clients, they would ask me like, how long is this gonna take? And then, I, I tell them, I don't really know until I get a comb through them. Until once I get my tools on them, then my brush will let me know how long this is gonna take. <laughs> you know? Alrighty. But I used to give time estimates just by looking at the dog and not actually putting a comb through the coat. And oh man, the clients would call like two, three hours later. Are they done yet? I'm like, oh my God. I just started washing them, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. And, and the thing is, early in my career, I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't know how to explain it or why it took so much time. I just knew, oh my God, look at all this. And I would blame the customer. I'll be like, you're not brushing your dog enough, you know? But really, now I understand what's going on. It's just biology, you know? It's just that time of year. During the summertime, this is what's gonna happen. There's not a lot the owner could have done 
to prevent this, you know, unless they block the sun. <laughs> but, you know, unless they have control over the seasons, there's not a lot that the owner can do about their dogs matting up during the change of the seasons, you know. So as my role as their groomer, as their dog's groomer, my role is to be the caretaker of their dog's skin and coat. So this is my role, you know, in her life, in, their, in, my, in the life of my clients. You know, this is my role. And I, I chose it. That's the amazing thing. You know, and I think that's why I enjoy this so much. And I never resent the work or the, str or the sweat. I actually embrace it and I, I'm so grateful for it because I chose to do this. You know, this is something that I choose to do and I love to do. And I actually, <laughs> I actually used to apologize when I took payment. <laughs> I used to tell people like, I'm so sorry, I have to charge you for this, you know? And people are like, don't, what are you apologizing for, you know? My mentor even, he, he told me like, you know, June, you're the only person I know that could get away with that. <laughs> apologizing for the price. He was like, anybody else would have lost all their customers, you know, like, cause they would have felt like something's going on, you know? Like, why are you apologizing and feeling bad? You know, it's like, it's, it's because I enjoy it too much. You know, I enjoy this too much. And I feel like, uh, am I allowed to enjoy getting, doing something that I'm getting paid for? Like, is that, is that okay? Like, I thought I had to dread it, you know? Like, I, you know, I thought the biggest frown wins, right? The person wearing the biggest frown in the office is the, usually one that's getting paid the most, right? So <laughs> I just thought, you know, that was work. You just put a frown on your face and the more convincing your frown, the more they pay you, right? I don't know, like... <laughs> So, but yeah, I mean, now I realize not only do people want you to enjoy your work, they love it when you enjoy your work, you know, and they pay you more because you enjoy it. Alrighty. And that's also why I, have, I stopped, you know, trying to educate my clients, quote unquote, educate and explain what it is I was doing because usually, usually I'm sweaty <laughs> and you know, I'm kind of breathing a little hard because my heart rates up because I'm doing something active, you know, physical activity, um, continual sustained <laughs> physical activity. But anyways, um, I'm usually breathing a little hard. I'm usually sweating. And I realize when I try to educate my clients and tell them what's going on, even if I'm just giving scientific facts, it kind of comes across as I'm resenting the work and I'm almost blaming them or trying to make them feel bad, you know, for what's going on. But so I kind of stopped explaining what I, what I do. I just do the work and I, we talk about other things. And, you know, because I feel like what happens is I could, if my, the analogy I like to give is that if my wife and I went out to eat a nice fancy dinner at a five-star restaurant, and I'm just a country boy, and I've never been to a, a five-star restaurant, or I think Michelin only goes up to three stars, so it shows you how much I know. But anyways, I've never been to a Michelin three-star restaurant, so I don't know how to order. I wouldn't know how to eat the dish, you know? So let's say I'm doing my best, trying to impress my wife, and the chef comes out, and he's sweaty, he's breathing hard, and he's trying to educate me on how to eat this dish properly, and how I'm not eating the dish properly, and how he, he's sweating and working so hard, and this is his art and passion, and how, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm not respecting his work, and. I'm not, you know, helping him, you know, whatever, you know, and educating me on this dish. I, you know, I mean, in front of my wife, I probably wouldn't say anything. I probably would just smile or laugh and just laugh it off. But I would never go back to that restaurant, you know, and that that experience would have been ruined by that chef. So I don't want to be that angry chef, that sweaty, angry chef that follows the food out to the table and educates the clients on how to eat it. I just want to be the chef that creates a beautiful dish for people to enjoy however they like, you know, and that's it. So that's why I've stopped, you know, quote unquote, educating my clients. I just, I just tell them, yeah, she did great today. You know, like we, <laughs> I just keep it light and simple, you know, and let them enjoy the groom. Now, I like to use the undercoat rake for the ears as well, for the inside at least. And you'll notice like, well, I saw a bunch of powder coming out the inside of the ears, crusty stuff. Oh, that feels good, huh, girl? She's leaning into it. 
Alrighty, so I like to do that just to clear everything out. So now, check this out. Look at all this that came out of there, right? Look at that, see how it wraps around the, around the comb? It's because it's dead hair. And that's why they mat so easily. You can see it just, it just clung around, you know, and matted around my comb because these hairs are so fuzzy. If you look at it under a microscope, it will look like Velcro. So literally like Velcro, it'll start to attach itself around my comb. So I used to not believe my clients when they told me like, oh, my dog mat just matted overnight. I'd be like, Psh, yeah, right, you know? But now I understand, I, I'm like, yeah, shoot, my dog matted overnight too. I got a little shizzy mix. Uh, because it's this hair. Once it gets fuzzy like that, so now this ear is combed out and beautiful. Look at that. And it feels soft. It feels nice and soft and beautiful. Now, look at this ear. Shoot, okay. Now look at this ear. See that? See the difference? Look at that mat. Look at that gnarly mat right there. See that? And feel how thick. So this ear, it feels thin. When you, when you feel it, it feels thin, right? Here, it feels thick. Like, yeah, it feels like the ear leather is actually like an inch, you know, thick, but it's actually not. This is all just this matted hair. So, oh my goodness, that feels so hard right there. Look at that. So that's a twig that got caught up in that matting. See that? And the reason why it just surrounds this twig and mats up around it so easily is just for the same reason that it mats around this comb so easily, because the hair literally is like Velcro and attaches itself to each other. Honey, <clears throat> can I get some water? Oh, Dexter. Thank you, honey. Alrighty. A little less vodka this time. <laughs> no, <it's good. laughs> okay. All right, I'm a dad, you know, stupid dad jokes. You know, we just, we just recycle them. That's what dads do. Anyways, okay. So look at this gnarly mat here. So we're gonna go under the mat. Oh, thank you, honey. <clears throat> you wanna say hi to everybody? No. Say hi to everybody. Are you too good? Are you too good to say hi to everybody? Uh, I'm <laughs> sweaty and just gross. I just don't. <laughs> oh, wow, that's cold water. Oh, man. Thank you, honey. Hmm. You good girl, Triple. Okay, do you need anything else? No, she's feeling much more comfortable. Good girl. I haven't even done her legs yet. We did her head, we did her body, like her trunk. We did this ear. Look at that. <laughs> now I gotta do this gnarly ear. Alrighty. So I was showing Where's them how you your, could just. Uh, mat splitter. Mat splitter? I ate it because I wanted to show the subscribers. If you don't have a mat splitter. Yeah, and my might. I wanted to show them my, my strength. And my real strength and I just the, chewed it up. How about the thinning shears? Same thing. I, I just crunched it with my jaws. Mm. Don't look over there. It's a mass blow. <laughs> okay. This will be like so much easier. Yeah. This is yeah, I was just showing them if you don't have a mat splitter, you can use your shears to do that and just cut through the mats. But yeah, okay, so I mean but if you have yeah. the tools I mean, why not use it, though? For the fans. For the fans. Honey, you don't understand. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Did you start a new video, or is this still going? No, this is still going. And people are still watching. Isn't that incredible? Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know. Even after the Tourette story, I told the story about the guy with the Tourette's at the post office, and they're still watching. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, no. She's on the core. Oh, it's okay.
she's she's reacting a little bit because these these uh, mats were so close to the skin and it was pulling at the skin probably already irritating and making it feel uncomfortable so when I go through and I'm kind of yanking at it a little bit tugging at it it's obviously gonna make that sore area of the skin make you know feel even more uncomfortable when it's already uncomfortable so that's why when they move around you know you just got to be understanding I even apologized to them, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, please forgive me. <laughs> Ho'oponopono. It's the four phrases in Ho'oponopono, uh, which is like the Hawaiian art. Um, but anyways, it's, uh, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. And so I love my job as a dog groomer because it gives me the perfect opportunity to say all four to the dog that I'm grooming. I almost like, oh, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And I repeat it over and over while I groom them, especially if I'm grooming a dog that's really matted and they're kind of, you know, reacting painfully. Then I tell them, like, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. And it really seems to work. Um, those South Pacific Islanders are onto something. Alrighty. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness, that big old mat right there at the end of the leather. So we're gonna use this to go under it like that. And see how it's shaped like a triangle? So it's made, designed to go under the mat and just kind of, you can work it, work it out. Just work it. Put your thing back, shake it and reverse it. Okay, honey. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that, Dexter. Dexter wants to be groomed so bad. <laughs> sorry, Dexter. You're the cobbler's kid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> he is. He knows it. Anyways, are the girls taking a lunch break? Yeah. Nice. So yeah, what, what I'm doing is just going on the inside now, working it from the inside. Look at that, all matted up. And like I said, there's not a lot the owner could have done to prevent this, unless she has control over the seasons. <laughs> unless she like takes a comb and combs her well, every day. Every day, but come on, realistically, realistically. Realistically, I'm a mom too. I do not have time to brush out <laughs> every out, day, wingy, you know, every day during the summertime, you know, during the solstice and the, you know, yeah, during the coat change time, you really got to stay on top of it like every day and it's just not possible. So I, I, I think it's practical just to kind of let it get like this. And that way we just do it one time, spend a little time, get it done one session. And then the next time it gets this bad is going to be like in the fall. And then after the fall, the next time it gets bad like that is like in the heart of winter, end of, Ju end of December, beginning of July, I mean, beginning of June, uh, beginning of January. Freak, how much uh, vodka did you put in there? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, are you sure it's because you don't know your months? Yeah. <laughs> I know my months, baby. I'm June. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody leave. Oh, wow. Well, no, you actually gained one. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So I'm working fast, not hard. You know, I'm going fast, but I'm not, I'm not being rough or, you know, too firm. You know, I'm just, just kind of working as fast as I can just to, you know, just to kind of keep things moving along so I'm not here all afternoon. And it really can feel that way. But um, what I'd like to do is just kind of use this as like a meditative practice. And I'd like to focus on my breathing. Just bring my attention back to my breathing and not even try to control my breathing. Just notice it. Just notice my breathing. Be aware of it. And by doing that, this literally becomes a meditative practice. And it, I literally don't even know the time is going by. And like two hours will have gone by. I'm like, oh my goodness, yeah, you know, it's like it's 119 already. Oh my goodness. 
okay? But we're almost ready for the bath. I can do the legs, you know, after the bath, like during the bath, kind of comb it out and after the bath. Because we're not going to shave the legs or anything. So, yeah, I don't encourage using shortcuts, but, you know, it's good to know some shortcuts once you're kind of running out of time. All right. Sorry about that, Trico. All right. Can you believe people watch? I shouldn't say that. Thank you so much, people who watched our videos and who's watching this. I really, you know, I tried to say this uh, yesterday in my live feed, but I got choked up and emotional, and I just, uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't control it. So, um, I, I just kind of stopped short. But I, I am fully aware that all of our success, all of our subscriptions, and the subscribers, everything, all of our growth has come as a result of the generosity of our viewers, of our subscribers, you know, it's like they're sharing our, our videos, they're telling other people about our books, they're sharing our content, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's all, it's literally a result of the generosity of our supporters. That's where all of my success comes from. And I'm, I'm completely aware of that, especially because my wife and I know <laughs> we, all, we can't afford to pay for, you know, ads, or to promote our posts on Facebook or Instagram or anything like we just don't have the funds to do that you know even if we did I'd just rather not <laughs> okay see that so once we've broken it up with the uh, mat splitter look at that it's easy just to get these big balls out see that look at that and I'm using the wide side of the comb first and then I'll go through with the finer side and when I do, I'm gonna flip it like that. Do you see that? So you gotta flip it like that if you wanna be a professional. <clears throat> oh, sorry about that, honey. Okay. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. All right, you wanna just go back in? You can yeah. just set up the stand. Hot out here, isn't it? Humid. It's not really hot, it's just humid. Arizona's hot. Yeah. Oh. Oh, this, there we go. Through her leg. There we go. So almost done with this year. Alrighty. Because you don't want to wash this ear like this, because this is only gonna get worse if you wash it in there, you know? So I say just get it out, you know, before the bath. And it'll save you a lot of time and effort. Not only that, you're gonna get a really nice, like a lot better result, a uh, finish, a lot better finish. So I'm holding sometimes, it at the base. Sometimes oh. what you can do is hold it at the base and just pin, use your fingers. Yeah, just pinch and it just out pinch like that. pinch it out instead of using any tool. Oh, sorry about that girl. She's like, oh man. See that though? Look how nice and shiny and smooth that hair is looking now, right? That was there the whole time under all of that mess, under all this mess. So literally like Michelangelo says, we're not creating the statue of David. You know, we're just chiseling away the excess. So when I do that, oh, I'm sorry. When I actually do the haircut and trim the ears, I'm literally just kind of trimming the ends here, just tidying it up. I, I don't have to do a lot of work on the ears when it's time for the haircut because all of this work is already done. And we've gotten this out and the hair and the ear looks nice and the hair lays nice and it's beautiful. So there's not a lot of work to do on the ears as far as the haircut is concerned. So I really, I consider myself a dog groomer more than a pet stylist, you know? Like, I feel like the haircut is just a small fraction of what I do, you know? I'm more of a dog groomer than a pet stylist. Actually, there are a lot of dog groomers who are much better skilled at the haircut than I am. So, you know, I'm surprised when people, you know, say that 
they want me to make more like how to groom videos, you know, like step-by-step like -step haircut videos because there's a lot of videos out there by a lot of big name groomers on YouTube, especially. You know, they do a lot better haircut than I do. <laughs> I'm more about the skin. But I do try to do a good haircut because I don't want people to look at my haircuts and say, that's why he focuses on the skin, you know? Because <laughs> his haircuts suck. Um, I don't want people to say that, so I do try to do a really nice haircut. Alrighty. Hey, Treacle. Alrighty. Look at the camera. Almost done with that ear, and then I'll go ahead and give her a bath. Okay. Oh, I got the other charger here. Give me a little. <coughs> That's not on my nose. I feel it's not on my nose. Yeah? Let me see. Is the camera on me? No. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Okay. All right, back, and there's no snot on my nose. All right. <laughs> oh, no, I already did that ear. See, that's the thing. When the ear's done, <laughs> even if you mistakenly go back through it, the work is not, like, magically there again. See that? It's, it's already done. Once it's done, it's done. So... There we go. We'll just do the top first and then I'll flip the ear and do the inside. Good girl, treacle. There we go. Just pull it out with your fingers. Look at that, look at that. Oh, oh man, look at that one. So you don't wanna just force it. You just wanna work it out. See that? And eventually, as you just kind of hit it from different angles, you know, you'll get that one perfect swipe where it just comes right out. Okay, now I'm gonna flip the ear and I'm gonna do the same thing for the inside. I can't find the mat splitter, my mat splitter, so I'll just... Right there. Oh, it's right there, okay. But see, you could do either one. You could use your scissors or the mat splitter. But the mat splitter, it is designed for this, so it does make it a little easier. See this mat right here? I'm gonna try to get right in the middle of this mat, right? See like that? And just split it right down the middle. And now I can just pull it right out. So it's called a mat splitter because it splits mats. <laughs> oh man. And you lost two views on that oh, one. Oh, man, I lost two views. Like, <laughs> oh, man, okay. Got to step up my joke game. The punchline, baby. I got to work on the punchlines. Okay. All righty. Now, because I know this dog, I know Treacle, I know that there's a little bump here somewhere. There it is. See that? Big old bump. Now, that's been there. It doesn't really seem like it gets bigger. You know, but we've been keeping an eye on that. And the vet actually has looked at that as well. They said, you know, it's, it's really nothing. So we're just, it, and like I said, I think it's a skin eruption. I think these pores had just gotten clogged and filled up so much, it eventually erupted out and fused together in this big, you know, just, uh, what do you call that? You know, just hardened skin, anyways. Up your DJPM ratio, dad mm -hmm. jokes per minute. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we're, I'm going to be, I'm going to, before I, I would forget about this spot here and I would go through with the comb and I would hit something and I would keep going over it and it would just kind of bleed a little bit. But now I know that that's there. I look for it and then I comb around it so I don't really irritate it too much. So yeah, I put my finger on it right there so I protect it. So even though I kind of go faster, my finger is protecting the bump there we go so we just pull these out Alrighty. Alrighty. there we go and then go down this way oh she's liking that look at that her back foot oh and i showed them how her back foot goes crazy 
at first, but then after we comb it out, her back foot doesn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's comfortable. All right. Oh my goodness, look at all that crud. We need better lighting so people can see it. All right, you can go inside, honey. I'm sorry. Keep, take up all your time. I know you said you were busy. When do you have to go out to do all your errands? Whenever. Okay. So I'm about to do the clothes shaving and then wash her after I shave her head and pads and sunny and ears. show that too yeah I was just gonna stream you know I mean I don't know people were, were asking me to do it so I was like shoot I guess I told them that I thought it was boring and that that's why I felt like it wasn't a good exchange of value for their time you know I'm asking for their time and they're watching and I was like it's just boring it's just me doing hopefully repetitive. nobody's regretting this request yeah, no, but they actually, uh, someone on their... On yeah, please do. It's not boring. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, they're telling me it's not boring. They're saying that they want me to do it. So, you know, if they want me to do... Hey, if the people, on the people's champ, baby. Once again. No, it's good. <laughs> okay, anyways. Can you smell a little with the groomers? Oh, no, that's not a good, <laughs> that's not a good line. Me being Asian, sheared no. and a dog. No. I'm not cooking. You can't smell anything the Asians cooking <laughs> because I'm not cooking, okay? I'm sorry. I yeah, referenced yeah. the rock there. Shoot. Anything can be learning experience. I need lots of it. No regrets. Okay, as long as there's no regrets. That's Sky Art. Yeah, Sky Art. She's awesome. I'm learning so much watching this. Oh, really? Okay, so here we go. That inner ear is all nice and smooth. Look at how beautiful it is now. Oh, I'm sorry. I just caught that bump I told everyone about. Oh my goodness, look at that. Bunch of powder right there. It was like a rough patch right there. Oh. And like, oh my, God. oh. You can feel it, you can see it. Like all this powder. I don't know if they can really see it. Oh my goodness, but right there, bunch of powdery stuff just came out. And rough patch of uh, hair. Now the skin is like smooth. But I need to sleep. It's 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Whoa, where are they watching from? I have a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, so this is extra relevant. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah, the Cavalier. Yeah, very similar ears. Oh, it's 8 p.m. here. 8 p.m. Wow. Wow, where are you guys? It's like Victor from the Bahamas. Wow. We just opened a at-home grooming business. Oh, nice. Alan Powell. I swap with what israel oh 8 p.m in israel wow oh i want to go to israel one day yeah 10, 10 30 a.m in cali oh nice malaysia in the house malaysia wow sky art is from malaysia so it's 2 30 a.m there wow wow well sky art thank you so much for your time thank you so much for joining yes and good night yes all righty India, 11 p.m. Wow. Ooh, India. My goodness, India. I 11 go p.m. India. over there. How do you go back to the... Comments? Oh, you gotta... There we go. Oh, okay. Wow, right here, it's kind of rough. Oh, see that? Oh, see that? All that powder <laughs> that just came out of there? It, it felt rough. And when I... When I kind of pulled at it, pinched and pulled, all that powdery stuff came out along with that dead hair. And now the skin literally feels smoother. The hair looks smoother. Can you see that? It looks shiny and black. Oh my God, look at that. More powder coming out. What is the powder? The powder... It's like cellular debris, dead skin cells, um, just dander, skin dander that gets built up inside those pores. Skyar says she can't sleep. She's got to watch this. Oh, whoa. 
<laughs> oh wow, that's amazing. Why why would why would someone trade sleep to watch me? <laughs> This is maybe maybe because I value sleep too much. I don't know. Alrighty. Oh look at that. And see, like right there, I, because I caught it that one time, it's it's bleeding a little bit, but that's fine. I mean, it happens. You How know. How long does it take for the powder to build up like that? Um, about six to eight weeks, I guess, because I see her about every six to eight weeks. And it it, it builds up more during the coat change. So during these seasonal changes, when their coat is literally, they call it blowing coat. It's getting rid of the older hairs by detaching them from the root, but they're still inside the skin, inside those pores, because they're bundled up and just kind of trapped in there. So by combing it out, we're not only clearing out those bundles of dead hair, creating space in those pores, but we're also letting out, it, it literally, see that bursts out, these little specks, look at that. Sometimes they look like little yellow worms even that come out of the skin. Mm, and they're hard and crusty. Yeah, look at that. And the best way I can explain it is like sometimes when I pop my pimple on my face, it, like a little yellow worm almost comes out of my pimple on my face. And then I lick it. I Ew. lick, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, sky is because you are more worth than sleep. Oh my Aww. goodness. Wow, honey. Yeah? Did you, did you just read that? I am worth more. No, <laughs> <coughs> to me, sleep. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. I even answered to you when I'm sleeping. <clears throat> oh wow, that's amazing. That's incredible. Oh my, Skyler, thank you so much. Like, I almost that's feel dedication. like dedication. I almost feel like you know I don't deserve it. I, I honestly don't deserve that kind of attention. Seriously, thank you so much. Oh my God, I don't even know how to repay that kind of generosity for your attention. You know, like. Just don't make it boring and keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Do you ever suggest to the owners that the dog needs shorter times between appointments? Yes, I Yes, we do. We do, but you cannot force somebody to come in sooner if they don't want to. Yeah, I, I've given up on trying to change people's behavior. I just work around it the best I can. So But we, we do give a limit, right? Honey, you said a limit. Six to eight weeks. No more than that. Um, well, we set a limit. I suggest three, um, two to three week rotation for a dry bath, which is a brush out service, which is doing this right here. Um, and then if they, like a double coated dog, we recommend every three weeks for a uh, brush out. But if they don't want to, um, I, then my next suggestion is four to six weeks. And then anything after six weeks, it's really hard to keep their coat maintained. And so um, what you can do is, um, you know, charge, charge more for anyone that comes in after six weeks. Because that's going to take Look extra time. Look at that powder. Look at that. Caked in there. Okay. Right here, it's still kind of thick. And I, I'd want to spend a little time on the back because I am going to shave it and go short. So we want to spend a little time clearing out these pores, especially while the hair is long. Because while the hair is long, you still grip those bundles and pull it out. But once the hair is shaved short, now you have all this stubble inside the skin. And it's really hard to get that out without irritating the skin too much. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Did you see that? Oh, my goodness. Sorry to me. Look at that. Look at that. Just, will you look at that? No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. But, oh my Jin, God. do you ever use a Furminator? We do. But I, I actually had a Furminator, but I, I use this now because my Furminator got stolen. But you can use it like that, just like a Furminator, you know? And you want to pat and pull, pat and pull. Just like Crystal LaCroix said. Okay that and look at that and also here from the comb all that powdery stuff coming off so that's what we're doing there so all of this is for the skin it's not really for the hair we're combing and brushing the hair but we're doing it for the skin and then once the skin is clear and the pores are clear and they have room 
and the follicles can now grow the new hairs without any obstruction, you know, without any, uh, you know, anything blocking their way. And the pores then aren't, don't have to get full and bubble up, you know. You don't have those bumps on the skin everywhere. Okay. Okay, she's feeling good. Much smoother. Okay. I already went through with the coat king too. This way. Okay. Oh man, it's really rough right here. I can feel it. So when you want to rub your hands through it, just really feel it because I can feel it. Okay, there we go. So we'll get the rest in the bath. After the bath. Now let's do the close shaving. Got the ears. Perfect. Not perfect, but excellent. Trickle's <laughs> such a good dog. Yeah. Well, and I'm giving her a reason to be a good dog, you know? Like hopefully this is really helping her feel better because all of this hair was inside her skin making it feel tight and uncomfortable which is why she was itchy but now that it's out and i can go through it and she's not even reacting you know her her legs not doing anything she's not leaning into it anymore she's feeling more comfortable so because she can see she knows she sees that i'm helping her and i'm you know this this is for her health and her comfort she's allowing me to do it and grooming is such a primal activity it's so instinctual that she understands, this is a language she understands so when I'm grooming her. I'm literally speaking her language right now. And it's kind of like if somebody um, went into my mom's uh, alteration store and my mom, you know, doesn't really speak English that well uh, and they tried to speak Korean to her, she would probably smile so big because she would feel like they're trying to understand her language, right? They're trying to learn about her language and the, she would feel appreciative. And I feel that like that's how the dogs feel when we start to try to speak their language. I agree. Doggies know when you help them. Yeah. They feel it in your touch, in the way you touch them, in the way you hold them. Yeah. Sorry, there's a glare, so I can't really read it. Oh. See what's going on. Okay. You can put it down on it and go inside. Yep. Thank you so much. I want to do the shaving now. But when I hold it at that upper angle, then they can really be able to see. Oh, really? It's for the fans, honey. You're dedicated too. I knew you were dedicated to this. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Thank you for reading all the comments. I'm trying. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> now, I'm going to bust out my nifty wall U-clip that I got. <clears throat> my wall you clip now not everybody can have um, fancy clippers like I do don't envy me just because I have all the fancy tools this here uh, is probably if you want to if you want a clipper like this it's gonna run you about 36 bucks on Amazon <laughs> I mean not everybody can live like me you know what I'm saying <laughs> If you're on a, well, basically, if you're on a budget, there's always ways to, um, you know, find cheap, uh, what yeah. you cheap tools to well, still get the it, same job done. Inexpensive. Inexpensive. Okay. Here a little bit. Um, for cheap. the metal combs, is there a difference in the quality and price? I've seen some for a dollar and others a few hundred. Do they all do the, oh no, I lost it. Do they all do the same job? I'm starting to build my toolkit. Uh-huh. I Honestly, in my opinion, the Greyhound combs are all pretty much the same. Uh, some of them have uh, better handles. You do want to feel the tips though. But, yeah. Because if the tips are too sharp, you want. I accidentally, okay. I was trying to. You, Crystal asked, how do you, how do your dogs do when you bring other people's dogs home to groom? Oh, they're used uh, to it. They're used to it. Because when we had our in-home <clears throat> our in-home grooming, um, we had dogs over all the time. So our dogs are pretty pretty good. Yeah, I mean they're not bad. And the thing is, as long as you don't feel rushed, you know, the dogs they're perfectly fine. 
you know, waiting for you. <laughs> like, if they're chilling, they're fine. You know, as long as they trust you, they don't feel like they're in danger, or, you know. So, I just want to oil it real quick before just I Just realize that's a pun. What? What's a pun? I don't know. Thank you, great tip. Jay Chong said, thank you, great tip. Oh, Jay Chong. She's watching, wow. Okay. Alrighty, so... I, I sprayed it down with clipper oil. I just oiled it. So now, this adjusts, right? So at this position here, I think it's like a 30 or a 40, like very close. It, this position all the way out, did you see that? is a 10, right? So that's close, and that's like a 10 or a nine. So I'm gonna use the longer side. I don't want it too close on her head. So here's what we're gonna do. Oh shoot, this cord is a little bit, I'll pull it closer to me. Oh, it's too short. There you go. So we'll start here at the head. So I like to do the head first because I feel like uh, I just cleaned it and oiled it. Um, I don't want to put it on her butt and other dirty areas like her feet and then do her head. You know, I'd rather do the head when the blade is clean and then do the, you know, feet and the butt and all those dirty areas. You know, why do they call it the sanitary area, right? It's like the least sanitary yeah, area. Yeah, <laughs> it's the least sanitary area there is Maybe on the Maybe that's why it's called the sanitary area. Yeah, I don't know. Shoot, well then. Well, someone someone commented on here. Mm -hmm. um, Victor Roberts, we do in-home grooming, hoping to expand to get out on the road. Awesome. Um, get out on the road as in mobile unit. Um, if so, before you purchase a mobile unit, just make sure you keep in mind the um, uh, you know, the maintenance on the van. You know, the generator and the water and oil changes and how much gas is going to be and all that good stuff. So, Jay Chung, maybe because it needs the most attention for sanitary. Yeah, uh -huh. maybe they're calling attention yes. to it. Oh my goodness, that reminds That's me. Um, did you know that pickpockets um, in New York in the subway, there's a sign that says, be careful of pickpockets. And pickpockets will actually hang out around that sign because people, when they read that sign, they'll, they'll um, unconsciously touch where their wallet or you know, where their valuable stuff is. So now the pickpocket knows exactly where, which pocket to pick. So, and they said that if, uh, if there isn't a sign that says beware of pickpockets, they'll put one up just to see people's reaction. And when they see them touch a certain pocket, they know that's the one to go for. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Anyways. The sanitary area that you know, just reminded me. So when you see a sign that says, be careful of pickpockets, don't check your pockets. <laughs> All righty. So you want to pull the skin tight, kind of pull the hair forward, pull the skin tight. And it's because I'm shaving close, I like to do it before the bath. And that way, um, you know, if she does feel itchy after the shave, because Every time I get my hair, you know, like my neck area shaved, um, if the skin feels itchy, irritated afterwards. And so I like to do it before the bath and that way the bath um, can kind of cool down any kind of skin irritation so it's not so itchy. Okay. Yeah, this clippers are not so right here, I'm gonna go a little closer. So I just adjusted the blade a little bit. It made it a little closer because it wasn't really catching the hair at that longer length. So shorten the blade a little bit so I can actually, oh, sorry about that trickle. So I can actually get to the hair. Move around, sorry. Oh, sorry, well these clippers, the cord is so short. Maybe we can find an extension cord or something. Yeah. So, you don't want to push down on the skin too much either. You just want to lightly let this let the blade glide, you know, so you don't cause razor burns or clipper burns. There we go. Do you have any Maltese mix 
Yeah, it's multi poos. Oops. Hmm. Maltese mix clients to show a grooming session. Oh, but yeah, I don't. Uh, she doesn't like. I don't even share. I don't even do Instagram videos with them anymore. Who? Um, the two multi poos. Oh. I have a random question. Is shaving a double coated dog like a husky okay? No. I've read some different things online. Is there a good organizing system for a shop? I know you use. Oh. Sorry, guys. I know you use Google Call. Is this necessary to pluck the ear hairs? Oh, the ear hairs? Not really. I just looked at her ears, and the ear canal is not really uh, blocked or clogged or anything. See that? And there's a little hair in there, but, I mean, it's healthy. It's, you know, not fuzzy and blocking. So as long as air can travel through, flow there, I'm not going to pluck ears that don't need plucking, you know? But if it's already, like, full and there's a big plug of dead hair there blocking airflow, if the ear's already compromised, then I'm going to go in there and actually, you know, clear it out so that now that the ear has a, you know, clean the ear really well, and then the ear would have a um, good, good environment to heal itself. And I would use the Zymox, you know, ear cleanser to clean it with if it was all nasty and I, and I plugged it. Maybe we can show Weemie's ear. Uh, um, there is a video on our YouTube channel um, for, uh, for uh, who was it, someone? That just asked about a puppy cut on a Maltese um, mix. We, we, me, our Chizu Maltese mix is on YouTube on, um, what is it called? The Grooming Table? Oh, yeah, a little series we started. We, a little we did series the... that we started on the Grooming Table. It shows how we do a puppy cut on we, me, if you want to. And actually, um, once we get our own place, um, and you know, we get a we make a room like a studio to groom in. We're gonna make a lot more of those grooming table, you know, series uh, videos on YouTube. It's just right now, you know. Yeah, sorry guys. Okay. Um, so Sonia, hold on, let me see if I could do this. Sonia asked if you're getting into a dog grooming school. What's the ideal amount of weeks required to learn the trade? What's your personal recommendation? Uh, I feel like, so a lot of, a lot of dog grooming schools, I hear the program is like three months or something like that, or some of them are eight weeks. Um, I personally feel like if I ever started a school or if I ever started like a, a test group of students, I would want to make it at least six months, at least. Because in three months, how much can you really learn in three months? Not only you know, that, not but just it, that, but the application. Yeah, it takes about that long to really get confident, and get the confidence to really go through and, you know, scissor and clip the dogs without feeling nervous or scared or anything like that. About six months. <clears throat> Plus, it's a hands-on feel type of job. Yeah. So you, it's gonna take time for you to feel. You know, you gotta feel different types of coats and feel the before and afters. To really, uh, so before uh, I, I didn't have the same opinion. I thought I could teach people to groom dogs, you know, and they could just start grooming right away. I was like, it's, it's such a simple thing to, you know, it's not like we're rocket scientists or anything, you know, we're not doing anything complicated, you know. I was like, I, I could teach anybody to do this, right? And so a lady named Patricia, she hired me um, to come out and help her, you know, groom and in her mobile unit out in California. And I remember, around, and she hired me for five days. And I remember around the third day, I started to panic. I started to freak out. And I started thinking, maybe I should just give her her money back because this isn't enough time. You know, I was thinking like, oh, there's not enough, this isn't enough time. And I, so I'm never gonna do that again. Like a week, one week training program thing. I just feel like one week is not really enough. Unless I may consider um, like somebody coming for a week to, with their own personal dog, like a pet owner and then I could spend a week teaching them to groom just their own dog, I would be open to that. But to teach someone how to groom all kinds of all dogs? All kinds of breeds in a week is really, really, really yeah. tough. <clears throat> but I would be open to maybe like a select few people, you know, teaching them to just groom their own personal dog in a week. I think a week would be enough time to teach someone to groom one dog. Um, 
Okay, so Skyar, a customer made us shave a husky and keep a mohawk on his back. We couldn't change his mind. Yeah, see, I don't. Yeah. I'm not in the. I'm not in the change mind business, <clears throat> and I respect how people feel. I respect other people's opinions, as long as they give me the same respect. You know, respect my opinions too. And I'm okay with somebody, a pet owner, saying that they absolutely must get their husky shaved. Okay, but I absolutely disagree, and I absolutely will not shave huskies. So, you know. I'm not gonna do it. And so we can just, we don't have to agree. We could just be clear. And I've turned away so many people and they were just so confused, you know, in the beginning. They were like, I just, and I would tell them like, there's so many groomers out there that are so happy and willing to, groom, to shave your husky. You know, I'm one groomer that's saying that I will not because I don't believe in it. So why are you trying to, you know, it's like trying to go to McDonald's and demand a Whopper. You know, it's like, dude, we don't make Whoppers here. They make them at Burger King. Go to Burger King, you know? So that's just how I explain it to people. Like, I don't shave dogs, so don't ask me to do it. Well, I mean, I'm shaving, I'm shaving a cocker here. But no, I don't, but I don't this shave. is her breed, though. Yeah, like... but I, and I did cart all that dead hair out first. But I don't shave huskies and double-coated breeds, like golden retrievers. I've turned away so many golden retrievers in labs especially during the summertime, and I would explain why the summertime is such a horrible time to shave the coat, you know, and still, they won't change their mind. They're like, no, nah, still, I just, I just want it shaved. And I tell them, well, then I can give you a, the number to the groomer down the street, you know, like, they'll be happy to shave your dog. Um, Jay Chung said that's a great analogy. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So going back up, Victor, thank you so much. Learning so much from you. Janice, thanks so much. You the best. Oh no, I'm really then, not. Uh, Jay <coughs> Chung, my school requires 500 hours to graduate. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's cool, you know, the certificate. I don't have any certificates. You know, yeah, I don't, we, you do. I do, but I don't, I don't display them. I don't care, you know, yeah. for me, being a good dad is much more important to me than hanging up a plaque on the wall that says I'm a great dad, you know, and my kids, you know, give me the side eye and they don't really like me, you know, like, I feel like doing it is much more important than having the certificate. If, you know, oh my, Bar Barbara, um, my, the lady who first taught me how to groom and do haircuts, she told me, if you want to be a great groomer, just do great grooms. And I was like, wow, that's so simple, how profound, you know? If you want to be a great groomer, just do great grooms. <laughs> so then the question is, how do you learn how to do great grooms? Well, practice a, a 10,000 hours, according to Malcolm Gladwell. Well, the studies that he researched, um, it takes about 10,000 hours of doing something repeatedly and not just doing it, uh, you know, absentmindedly, you know, like just clocking in and putting in hours. No, it's 10,000 deliberate focused hours where you're really focused on what you're doing and you're trying to get better with every hour that you put in you know so that 10,000 of those hours gives you mastery level you know you begin to start mastering your craft Janice Ho totally want to learn how to groom my dog properly where are you located we are located well, we live in Suwanee, Georgia, but we work um, in Atlanta. Our yeah, most of our are clients are in Atlanta. Atlanta. What kind of doggy do you have, Janice? Um, okay, Sonia, thanks a ton, but majority of the schools that I inquired in have max eight weeks. Eight weeks, wow. Yeah. What can you really... <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> because that school is not out to create masters. They're out to create a profit for themselves. Tanya, there is an article for the double-coated breeze to shave or not. YouTube doesn't allow me to put the link, but the author is Mia, Mia Overnos, and the title is To Shave or Not to Shave. Oh, I think I read that article. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, yeah, that's a, okay, so Jay Chung says, thank you, Tanya, we'll check it out. Tanya says, article to shave oh, so here. 
or not to shave. A look into the <sighs> literature about dogs' thermal regulation. So right here, Cold see her lip here? More. What you want to do is you want to use your thumb to pull the lip like that. Pull the skin tight. That way, when you go through this way, you can get it nice and clean and short. But because the skin is nice and tight, you're pulling it tight with your thumb like that, you're not going to clip the skin. See that? And you just want to kind of skim, lightly skim, when you're going the other way. See that? And then you can pull it this way even. Go that way. And then after the bath, once I get the hand stripping a little bit more there, pulled out, you know, a card, you know, remove a little bit more hair here with the stripping knife, um, the, sh the shave marks and the clipper lines will go away. There we go. Then here, just pull the skin tight. Oh, there you I go. See. So yeah, so you want to pull that skin tight with your thumb. <clears throat> so we'll do the other side the same way. You want to pull it tight like that, right? And that way you can kind of skim and you won't, you won't catch the, you won't catch the skin there. See that? even if you kind of go close because the skin is tight. There we go. Oops, sorry. My fingers are open the go. camera. Um, do you recommend any brands for your toolkit? Uh, I just put it all in a backpack that was given to me by a client of mine. Oh, Tiffany Moses, she actually is the one that helped me edit my book, The Art of Grooming. <clears throat> so she gave me a backpack to, to put all my tools in and that's what I use as a toolkit, is just my gray backpack. <laughs> I mean, you can purchase anything that, you know, any toolkit, there's toolkits yeah, with the wheels on Yeah, I've seen some really nifty ones. Yeah, I mean, it's your preference, really, whatever will make it easier and more comfortable for you. Actually, at Walmart, in the hardware section, I saw a toolkit, a plastic one, that you know, with the wheels and the handle that pops up like a suitcase. And it had, like, compartments, like, like you know, different levels. So you could put, like, a force dryer on the bottom compartment and tools on top and stuff. It was, like, 30 bucks, I think, at Walmart. I was thinking about buying it, too, but then I was like, I don't really need it, you know? <laughs> And then somebody else was asking. Okay, clean um, up her neck a little Wanda, bit there. what kind of clipper is that again? It's so quiet. Oh, it's wall. Wall U clip, and it's quiet because I I, I keep um, cleaning, cleaning out the bristles here, and I keep it oiled as much as possible. I continually oil it, and so it keeps the blades um, clean and quiet. So now the cocker ears. <clears throat> they say it's like the third of the ear, but it's not. It's like this little part here that you want to shave. So what I do here is just hold it and go towards the ear leather. You don't want to go this way because you're going to end up catching that skin and, and making it bleed. You want to go this way with the hair. See that? Right there. And right up to about there, right? And then you just go here and just clean up here at the top, right? So like almost here at the jawline, you know, you just want to go to the jawline, just the top of the ear here. Okay, hold on, let me see if I can get a better angle. And you just clean it up like that. Clean up the inside of the ear. And you want to, you want to clip about the same same way down, a link down right there. Right to about there. All right, that way it opens everything up, gives you that nice clean spaniel look, ear, you know, that spaniel looking ear. It keeps this area clean, All right? And then we're gonna scissor this just to kind of uh, blend it in later when we do the haircut. And there's the cocker ear. And then you just kind of trim a little bit there. You know, so most of it is that brushing and then you get a beautiful cocker ear. Now we'll do the same on the other side here. Um, someone was asking, 
Jay Chung, do you use those clippers for all dogs? Yes. Yes, for every dog now. And I use the plastic home guards, you know, to give me some length when I need it. Tanya, so is your routine sanitary, brushing, clipping, washing, styling? No, my, my um, routine is brushing, then sanitary, and then washing, and then do the clipping and trimming. But the sanitary, I include the pads, you know, and if I have to shave the head, then the head, like a schnauzer, I'll do that before the bath. But always remember step one. Step one is build rapport. You don't want to go any further until you've completed step one. And, and it's never really complete. It's not like you check it off and say, oh, I have rapport, now I'm, you know. No, it's, it's something that you're continually doing. You're building upon the rapport that you have and you're constantly building upon it. But you want rapport with the dog. You want the dog to know and trust you. And then you can move forward doing anything. You know, you can wash them. Yeah. There we go. Now we do the inside here. Clean up the inside a little bit. I can't see. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <coughs> yeah, you can see it now. There we go. I'm just going to skim right there, clean that up. So I'm not really touching the skin, just kind of skimming. Can you see? Sorry, guys. My camera angle is kind of bad. I'm trying to get okay. to see the angle. <coughs> Honey, you're amazing. Everything you do is amazing. Don't worry about it. Aw, you're too nice. Just the way you... Oh, hey. <laughs> um, <laughs> it'll, Crystal. It'll lose subscribers. <laughs> oh. Um, Crystal, would you groom the dog after that person took their husky somewhere else to get shaved and brought them back to you to maintain them? Yes. Or would you still turn them down? If they are willing to stay on our rotation, then it doesn't matter if they go somewhere else. We'll still do our, our yeah. job. But the thing is, our schedule is so full that they would have to stay on the rotation. If not, then unfortunately, we won't be able to take them. Yeah, it's easy to fall out of the rotation. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so Sandra, hey, Germany here. Germany, we got to go to Germany one day. Yeah, I'm looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, there's so many... Um, new friends out there in Germany um, any tips what the first thing is when you open a grooming salon love your positivity please sing more Sky oh, wow. <laughs> um, so first thing to opening a salon uh, first thing is when you open a grooming salon okay any you want to go first what's up you want to go first? Go first. In answering. Singing? Are we doing a sing-off? Please do. Love to meet you. No, she's asking um, any tips what the first thing is when you open a grooming salon. Oh, I got a great tip for when you open a grooming salon. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't no. do it. Unless no. you're going to do it. Then okay. just do it. <laughs> okay, our, our, okay, my first thing is when you get a shop, when you um, open up a salon, you, want, you don't want to spend too much money on fixing up the place. Yeah. Okay, because we made that's where we made our mistake. And then once you use spend up all your funds on fixing up your salon, then I mean, then how are you going to support yourself until you know business? Yeah, you we get spent the cash all flow. our money on so, making it look nice. Well, and the thing is, um, a lot of the reason why I did that was, you know, just to be honest, I wasn't very confident in myself, you know, and I thought that having the place look nice would somehow, you know, give me that credibility. So I focused more on how the shop looked, you know? I should have just focused more on getting it open and getting people in there to try the grooms. Sky Art says sing off. <laughs> oh, sing off. Yes, yeah, sing off. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Oh, no. Hold up, no. being a big star. Oh, hold on, we gotta okay. go back. Going back to <laughs> the <we're being laughs> So now the head is done here. And see here, do you guys see a little clipper line there? We can always touch that up with the scissors later. You know, you kind of see it there. 
And we can always use the um, stripping knife, you know, to get that and smooth it out later after the bath. But we got most of it now, sure. You know, we got all the hair off the neck here. See that? The, around the neck, the neckline. You know, got that. Around here, got that. See, so now the neck is open. Got the ears, I got behind the ears here. See that? And then got this side here. So we got the head done, right? And it doesn't feel bumpy, it feels smooth. It feels nice and smooth. Right, and that's what you want. You want the skin to feel smooth. And now we can move on to the feet and the sanitary area. All right. <laughs> People are saying, sing off, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, uh, that wouldn't be fair. My wife is actually really good. No, I'm she... not. <laughs> <clears throat> when you sing I O U, your, re your rendition of I O U brings me to tears oh man no, <laughs> is there any specific reason you chose those clippers uh just <clears throat> no Honestly, no reason really no, remember just honey you were like uh, you were looking through the clippers and you were like how about this i was like no nah, i'm done with those clippers i was like i tried those you know and then she my wife she was like well you always tell people that the tools don't really matter and you can just use any tools really and you're like you know Maybe what if let's... I order these cheap ones? Yeah, I was like, you know what? Do it. I was like, let's do it. Let's put it to the test. You know, I say that the tools don't really matter, that the groomer matters more than the tool. And so I was like, let's, let's put it to the test. Let's get the cheapest pair of clippers we can find. And so we ordered these because they were 36 bucks. And at first, I remember the first dog I groomed with this, uh, it was a Catan. And he, you know, gets a nice, long, fluffy teddy bear cut. <clears throat> we leave about five eighths of an inch on the body and we leave about an inch inch and a half on the legs So nice poofy cut and I remember feeling like nervous. I remember feeling anxiety building up I was just like, oh no, it's not I'm gonna it's gonna take forever It's not really gonna work out and it's not gonna look good and smooth, but actually Sky I say sing together then <laughs> Oh man, we should We'll do a duet later. Hold on uh... Tell me more tell me more Oh, Grace, you taking it back. Oh, yeah. You taking it way bum, back. Bum, okay, hold bum, on. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Jay Chung, rather than expensive ones? <clears throat> you know, the thing is, I've been, I tried the Wall Bravura. Um, the power cord gave out, and now I can't use it because it doesn't hold its charge. And also, the top, the clipper part here busted off, and now it doesn't stay on. I have to keep it on with a band aid wrapped or, taped around it. Um, my Andes, all, every, I had like four different kinds of Andes clippers, every single one of them, the power cord would give out. And you know, like if you held it at a certain angle, it would work. But if you change the angle, you no longer have power. And also the blade drives would just constantly need repairing. So I just was not impressed with the expensive clippers. Maybe I needed to go more expensive, who knows, but these cheap clippers here, $34 clippers, I'm actually more impressed with the sturdiness and the durability of these clippers than the 100 <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> right? I mean, so I'm very impressed with it. Okay, so yeah. Sandra, So on the thank feet, you. I did it close. I did it close, this uh, close um, setting here on the feet. Now that I'm gonna be doing the sanitary, I'm gonna make it longer, see that? I don't know if they can see the difference, but like, like that, it's just a slight difference, but I'm gonna move that blade up to the longest link possible. Skyler, <clears throat> that's the same thing that happened to my Andes. Yeah, <clears throat> so. Ooh, baby. Andes actually offered um, to let me be like their social media ambassador. Um, and they're saying, you know, they're not gonna pay me anything, but you know, I get to use their equipment for free and stuff like that. And I just have to plug their, their brand. And I, I just never replied, responded to that because, you know, I don't want to plug a company or promote a company that I actually don't believe in. Hold okay. on, Trico. You're okay, girl. So that's a little uncomfortable for her. <clears throat> so I'm not actually touching the skin. You just want to... Can you see that? Yeah. You just want to kind of skim the skin. You're okay, girl. There we go. 
Just a light touch. <clears throat> now see this? You see these like brown spots here? That's fungus or bacteria growing right there. These little brown funky spots. I don't know if they can see that. So that right there is a per, see that right there? It's brown funky spots there, right there. <clears throat> now, honestly, I don't know if it's bacteria or fungus, but good thing for, for me, Banix covers bacteria and fungus. <laughs> so, oh, we need some more Banix. Got one more. Do you do that a lot of? Standard, what? Standard poodles? No, uh, uh, trickle. <coughs> um, Sandra says, thank you. So you need to come to Germany and visit my salon. Oh yes, I would love that. I would love that. Look at how close his face is to the butt. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Baby. He loves that too. <laughs> Don't give away our bedroom secrets. <laughs> <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Remember the first time I heard that word butt muncher? Oh my god, I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> Anyways. That's the same thing that happened to my Andes. Okay. Sandra, got one more. Do you do a lot of standard cuts? Oh, standard cuts. Oh. Well, I try to. If I have a purebred like this, then I try to honor the breed cut as much as possible, but I do modify it. You know, I tailor it to my client's needs, you know? So they don't need her to be in show coat and all long and everything. They don't want her long. Yeah, they really want her as short as possible and easy to maintain. And plus she's old. So I'm gonna do her as short as possible, you know, even on the back here too. But I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna leave a little bit of the length on the legs. I'm still gonna honor the the pattern of the English Cocker Spaniel, um, just modify it, you know, make it a little shorter and um, more pet friendly. Uh, Crystal, how much grooming experience do you recommend having before opening your own salon slash business? <clears throat> so... <clears throat> your confidence. Let me uh, just preface this because I don't want to be hypocritical. <clears throat> I started my grooming business after about a year experience. <laughs> because I was very arrogant and I thought I knew everything and that was a huge mistake. So um, that being said, because I don't want anyone to accuse me of being a hypocrite, um, I recommend at least four or five years experience before starting your own grooming shop. But I didn't and that was a mistake and I lost my business and I no, lost my lost car. No, we lost our business not due to um, lack of ex well, well, lack yeah. of experience. It's just... A lack business of a experience? business experience, really, if anything, because the grooms are excellent. The customers were there. It's just we didn't calculate. We weren't smart about <clears throat> calculating how much each dog yeah. needed to be charged. Well, for that shop, for, for that area. For that area. I, and then once we calculated it, we realized we should be charging about $200, you know, for some of the bigger dogs. And I was like, $200? I was just like, I can't. I just felt uncomfortable. But now... Looking back on it, a lot of those clients were saying to keep us in business, if they'd known that that's what we needed to charge, they would have been happy to pay that. Um, but I'm glad we went out of business, honestly, because had the business succeeded, we would still be there, honey. Right now, we would be there. Yeah, I know. We wouldn't be able to spend time with our girls. It was. It felt like a prison almost. Well, the really thing, did. another thing is, is um, you when you have the funds to open up your shop, do not spend all your money there all at once because you. It takes time to build that word of mouth. You know that you're even there <coughs> in the first place. Yeah. And then not just that, but then you know if you do get busy and you hire somebody to help you part time, you gotta pay for that, and then. You know, the uh, rent, cam, water bill, electricity bill, um, taxes. There's all kinds of taxes you got to be aware of. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Dexter. Aww. I'm looking for the mail file, the journal. <coughs> Is she sitting on it? No. Hmm. In your backpack, maybe? Can I not pull it out, maybe? <coughs> Oh, 
But Sandra, I hope we answered your question about, you know, about opening up a salon. Do you have any other questions like regarding, you know, oh, another thing I can recommend is um, you're never, when someone calls to make an appointment, you're never available today or tomorrow. If you hold this, I'll go find one. The dremel? In the box. There's one in the box? Wow, it's, I just, I just had it. That's weird. Confused. Okay, well, Confused. Uh, what I can do is. Draco. Uh, hey girl. Interesting. Yes, thank you. <coughs> oh really, why? Honey, uh, why do you not want to set customers today or tomorrow? Oh, because uh, it, it sets precedent and it, it, it's about uh, like uh, the, like putting an image in your client's mind. If, they're, if they get used to calling you and being able to get a, their, you, know, you squeezing their dog in today or tomorrow, they never feel the need to call you ahead of time and schedule their dog ahead of time. But if you refuse today or tomorrow, and even if you don't have any dogs to do that day, you know, make other plans, you know, um, build your brand, start a social media thing, um, maybe even um, make a plan, write a, write a social media marketing plan, you know, use that time to really work on yourself and your business. Um, don't accept a, a dog today or tomorrow. And then your clients start to get used to that. They start to realize, if I call today or tomorrow, you know, if I call the day of, I'm usually not going to get in. So let me call ahead of time. And then you start to get clients scheduling all throughout the year. They say, well, just put me on a um, standing five week rotation. You know, so every five weeks now we're scheduled. You know, but then you, you don't, people don't feel the need to do that if you're always available, you know? Yeah. And same thing, um, just because you're desperate and for money, um, you know, if you're going to give a discount, it's, then you're going. You're labeling labeling yourself as a discounted groomer. So we have to really be patient and during the slow times, really think about how you want to brand yourself. Yeah, oh my goodness, Jay Chung, five dollars. That's not much, but it's <coughs> just a small amount. Oh, thank you. What? That's crazy. Thank you. What? Okay, I guess we'll just follow. And then the she mails wrote, "I love to stay, but I have to go." Thank you for always answering questions and making these videos. Wow, thank you, Jay Chong. I look Chung. up to you too. You really don't so have to. Oh you really God. don't have to do thank that. Thank you so much. Wow, I really appreciate that. Oh, okay. that's awesome. Okay, well then, um, we'll continue after the bath. Yeah, maybe? that way you could you could do your errands then too. I gotta go her. do my stuff, and then um, we'll see you at the haircut when I do the fi the final haircut. We'll see you there. Awesome scheduling tip. Yes, and you know if they don't have a recommendation, <coughs> if they the scheduling. Um, after you after the groom is done, what I'm gonna do is tomorrow, I'm going to email Treacles Treacles mom and say hey. You know, how is she doing? How are you and the family enjoying the haircut? Is there anything that you want us to change for the next groom? Um, and if everything is okay, then, you know, hey, would you like to uh, go ahead and set the following appointment? You know, um, we c if it's a new client, you can suggest three weeks out for a brush out, you know? And honestly, or... if it wasn't for us disciplining ourselves and making ourselves not available today or tomorrow, if it wasn't for that, a lot of our business plans and ideas would have never gotten written down. You know, we, uh, we would sit down in the kitchen and we would start making plans of um, how we're going to, you know, how we're going to approach this. The book would have never gotten written, my, my Art of Grooming book, you know. A the, my YouTube videos, it wouldn't have gotten edited and put up, you know. So I used those days to create what I have now. And so there's a quote that says, do something today that your future self will thank you for. Mm -hmm. And I really kept that in mind. I'd always try to do something today that my future self would come back in time and thank me for. And, I, and even now, like, I really would. I would go back in time and tell myself, thank you so much for doing that. You know, like, I actually have 20,000 subscribers now on YouTube because you did that, you know, five years ago self. Thank you so much, you know. And my five year ago self would have said, hey, I could really use some money. Could you give me some money? No, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, anyways. Oh, so anyways, yeah, if you, especially for a double-coated dog, 
if you can get them on the schedule every three week rotation, that would be great. Uh, four weeks, even better. Um, let's see, Sky Art. I think I have to sleep now. Good night. Good night, Sky Art. Thank you for thank you so uh, much, Sky Art. Tuning in. Let me get my purse ready. I'm gonna go ahead and get her treacle here washed up makes sense you two are the bomb yeah Corrine so the, the washing is the Kimmy. easy part you know now i just gotta wash and dry her you know this is the easy part what we did before the bath this is the mise en place you know if you're a chef the mise en place is the most important part of a chef's day the prep this is the prep before the bath yeah anyways I'll so see you guys. anyways <laughs> see you later Yes, Sky Art, we are going to be streaming later too. Sorry, I look a hot mess right now. We are, she even looks young. She does look young. Okay, guys, I don't know how to turn this off, but we will be back after the bath.